I don't think anybody has spoke yet. I had the music playing. I was sending out all the invites. Oh, gotcha. I didn't hear no music. So that's why I was like, huh? Yeah, it takes me a minute to get it all set up. I try to get out invites on both accounts. I got to set up the recorder on the one. Andrew, dead picks. Whoever else I approve, what's happening? What's going on, gents? How we doing? Man, another day. Another day. Let's see. How'd you guys pay for you Man. go? You guys get enough in? If you got any in, it was enough. It's always too much when you're fucking doing tape. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the worst thing ever, but it's not the greatest thing ever, man. What'd you guys think of uh, old Sergey Pavlovich? On set? God, I mean, he did exactly what he was supposed to do because Blades did exactly what he wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I don't know, bro. I was I've been high on Sergey. I I wasn't surprised. I'll say it that way. Like I'm not doing the Nick Diaz thing. I just wasn't sincerely wasn't surprised. And the dude, you could see there was a couple punches he hit Curtis like with one in the shoulder, and then hit him like Curtis had his hand up, and he hit another one, and still you could see that it made you know that he felt it through the guard mm-hmm. like that dude hits like a fucking Mack truck well, I, I wanted to see him get into some later rounds and really see if he's got a gas tank you know because I watched the Overeem fight where he held him down pretty easily and I was like and then I had guys telling me that he was in Sambo so I was like I was just hoping to see something better out of the first round and no I mean Blades just did exactly I the only thing I don't like about Sergey is he definitely punches pretty wild uh he does hit hard, obviously, because he's dropping guys. Uh, some of his decisions or the stoppages were a little early on these on his little streak that's going, but he can't kick it from him. He throws heat, he drops guys, and that's what stops fights. So, good, good luck. I don't think him. he throws too wild. I think I think he intends to hit people in the shoulders and fucking punch you right in your forearm if you've got it up. Like I, I think he feels like he hits hard enough no matter where he hits you. Yeah, but it leaves yourself matters. open. You're going to get caught one of these times, you know. Is that, that style of fighting? Yeah, I don't disagree, but we'll see. So here's one here. A couple. We'll do these for a couple of minutes before uh, we get going. I only got hey, – Yo, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, go ahead, bud. Yo, bro, Um, I was going to say, like, you know, one fight we go denied is uh, Pavlovich versus Ngan, and we deserve to see that shit, man. I know, I know Paulo Vigil is going to fight um, John Jones, but we needed to see power for power. Gano and fucking Pavlovich, bro. Like, shit, man. That would have been fucking, yeah, that would have been the best match to see. I agree 100 Go ahead, bro. Andrew, where are you going? I hear you walking, bro. Click, 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 click. Oh, shit. Man, Sorry, I-, I thought I was <laughs> muted. No, nah, bro, I pace. When I'm on, like, the phone or something, I, I pace. I got you. I got yeah. you. I can't yeah, sit I think, still. <laughs> I think I think Ninganu Pavlovich would be a phenomenal fight, but man, I yeah, probably the best fire fight we've seen in a long, long time, actually. Yeah, to be honest. Uh so Holloway was talking about he'd be honored to box Tank Davis, bro. Like, here's here's my question, okay? Could Holloway last eight rounds with Tank Davis? I say no. No, but if no, he around, some but no. money under the table, he could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like scratch it or bet it. I'm scratching the shit out of it. Okay, okay. So, what's the over under on five point five rounds? Which one are you taking? Un- under, under what do you call it? Under. I'll take it at negative five hundred. No shit, huh? Yeah, you it's think gonna we get it done that quick. I, I'm not doubting it, bro. I just like I think it's ridiculous that we've got to hear talks that Max Holloway thinks he could box Tank Davis. Like, bro, come the fuck out. Yeah, calm down, Max. Calm down, bro. Yeah, you know, but that. you do have to say, like, we didn't expect uh, McGregor to make it nine rounds. You know that. Was hey, don't idea. forget McGregor got carried. Come on, man. Yeah, you really thought he was more than nine rounds with Floyd Mayweather? 
I don't know. Floyd told history, his bro. friend. Floyd Floyd told his friend to drop a stack on the tenth round finish. That's yep. real life. That's real fucking uh-huh. life. Uh, that's that's real planning, man. Yeah, uh, Volk was offered a is a rematch with Islam, but says he wants to stay active. My question is, uh, people want to see that fight? Scratch it or bet it? I scratch it. I don't think people want the rematch. Yeah, I'll scratch it. I, I don't want that. I do. I, I mean, bet. it was it was a good fight. I I wouldn't good mind good it myself. I don't see it. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I All actually right, attended well. that match, bro. Well, it's good, man. I'm glad to hear there's people on both sides of it. Uh, all right, last one. Scratch it or bet it. Pavlovich is a bigger problem for John Jones than Stipe Miocic. I bet the shit out of that. Yeah. In terms well, of Stipe up. is not a problem at all. So by by default, yes, it would be the other person. <laughs> I, I I agree with you. I agree 100. percent of course, of course. That's a- you know, I will tell you one thing. I've met Stipe in person. He's fucking massive. He doesn't seem like it when you see him in there. Bro, he's a massive fucking person. These guys that are making him look small, like I've never met Ninganu, for example, but like even my buddy, he's a six foot plus guy, you know, a 250 plus guy. He's like, bro, Stipe is fucking massive. Like he's a big boy. Dude, don't get me wrong, man. Four years ago, I would have loved to see this fight. I think it would have been great. But Stipe's 40, bro. Like, no. It's just, it's not there anymore, man. It's not. I I would compare this. I, I, I didn't tweet it earlier. I thought about it and was busy. I would compare this to watching Floyd, Mather, Floyd Mayweather fight Manny Pacquiao when he did. Like, it's just, it's not relevant now. Watching John fight Stipe, yeah, like at heavyweight, no question. Two greatest, no fucking question. John came in, did what he did, came up from light heavyweight. Stipe with his whole resume, but it it didn't happen fast enough. John spent too long going up to heavyweight, three fucking years. Like, yeah, I think it's just that. I think that is, this is MMA's Mayweather Pacquiao. I really do. Like, I don't even see the fucking point. And I think Stipe will be less competitive than Manny was, to be fair. I think John gets it done quick. I really do. Um, That's all I've got for them. I didn't write up a big review for last week's card. Um, Just some weeks I have the time and some weeks I fucking don't. Uh, I'll run it down, though. Um, Bottom to top, top to bottom, however you want to say it real quick. Um, Brady, he stand, uh, knocked out. The girl, back girl, Dana or Dana back girl. However, I don't, bro, wherever it's printed both ways, so I don't know which way to say it. It's like a lot of the Asian names are that way. They just go they, to one, go to the left. Yeah, but it's everywhere you go, you look somewhere else. It's printed one way or the other. Anyway, he knocked him out in the third round. Um, uh, Francis Marshall, uh, dropped the decision to William Gomez. Um, after seeing the weigh-ins, man, I wasn't like betting on that fight, but man, I really, I didn't think Gomez looked well, man. I thought, uh, I thought, I thought Francis would have the big edge because of it. Uh, Usman and Tafa fucking broke everybody's parlays that bets over unders and them motherfuckers went to distance fucking pricks. Uh, Norma Dumont and Carol Rosa did exactly what they were supposed to and went to decision. Norma Dumont pulled off the W uh, Montel Jackson KO'd Ronnie Yaya in the first round. That had to be the most bet prop on the whole card. I mean, I don't actually look at all that, but I would just imagine a ton of people were on that. Uh, Christos Gigas uh, KO'd Ricky Glenn in the first round. Um, exciting early card, uh, at least for a good portion of it anyway. Uh, Jeremiah Wells and Matthew Sh- uh Samuels Berger went the distance. Um, I didn't think that one would go the distance either. That's another one that got me. Uh, Yasmin Lucindo did exactly what she was supposed to do to Brogan Walker and beat her by decision. Um, Bobby Green, <laughs> Jared Gordon. Bobby Green was protesting. I don't know who's seen him rant and rave on fucking Ariel Luani's. Bro, he's mad. <laughs> Okay, so I watched it, and when I was watching it live, you know my buddy Scott. 
Scott's sitting there, and I looked at him before any replay or anything. I swear to God, and went, that's a no contest. I knew right away, like, just, I don't know why, not like I'm some fucking aficionado, just right away, the first thing I thought was, that's a no contest. That shit was headbutt. And he was like, was it? And I was like, yeah. He goes, yeah, for sure, no contest if that's what it was. So, like, I'm just surprised that people were surprised is what I was getting at. Like, I I thought it was the absolute right call. Did anybody think it was the wrong call? No, no but I was pretty upset. No way. I was, I was swishing death. I'm like, the, the, the fucking com, uh, the committee, like I always do. I got to start doing that. So, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, I mean, it, it, it looked like a no contest live. Like, you watched it live, and you're like, oh, that was a headbutt. <laughs> and then they show the replay, and you're like, yeah, it was a headbutt. That's exactly what I'm saying, bro. 100% how I feel. Even live, I immediately was like, oh, no contest. So, yep. yeah, for sure. Um, what came after that? Oh, Bruno Silva, I guess he did what he should have did and beat Brad Tavares. Um, I don't know. I thought that fight was a was a pick em. Um, And then Sergey Pavlovich fucking knocked out Curtis Blades, bro. This dude's got an average fight time with two minutes, 13, 15 seconds in the UFC before that fight. I don't know where that takes him, but he's still under, he's still under half a round average fight time. So, like, keep that in mind if you bet over-unders, man. That dude is still averaging under half. If you can get on DraftKings on, uh, on fight day or Friday before, they offer the over-under .5 rounds, so... I'm not saying to go hammer it, but they also offered does round two start no as an option. Um, when that dude fights, that's a fucking serious thing to consider, in my opinion. Um, God damn. I, I felt like he hit Curtis so hard, like, even through the guard, like, Curtis just knew, like, fuck, I can't do this. Zaza, go ahead. Yo, what's good? Joe, Drew, Dead Picks, Rhino, Thomas. What's happening? What up, brother? That's good. Yo, Joe, you called it, though. You were on Sergey, and I was with you, man. I listened to it. Good shit. Yeah, bro. It wasn't like it was just an issue of could Curtis get the takedown, and I didn't think that he could, and I thought even if he could, it would be in a second round, and I just didn't see him making it to the second round. Like There was just nothing that showed that. And Curtis doesn't typically shoot in the first. Like, you can statistically look at it. You can watch tape. Even if he does, if it gets stuffed, he doesn't pursue the shit out of it in the first round. Second round, you go into the second round with Curtis Blades, you 100% know he's going to shoot on you. I knew there was no way he was he was going five minutes with Pav on the feet, bro. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, whatever. I was happy about it, too. Um, I don't think that we'll ever get to see Pav fight, John. I think Pav will – I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I just don't think we'll see him fight John. I really want to see him fight John, but I don't think we see him fight John. I don't. It doesn't even make business sense for the UFC, I guess. Like, I don't know. So you think uh, John retires? What do you call it, after Stipe? Yeah. Or take oh, yeah. someone that's not Stipe and then retires, but not Pavlovich. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And they offered him big money, so maybe John fights a couple more. Like they gave him a huge contract, bro. It might be enough money to make him keep fighting, and I really hope so. But um, yeah, bro, I just doesn't yeah, make. Let me ask you, Joe. Do you think you think um, John Jones avoiding Stipe? I mean, sorry, um, Pavlovich. No, I don't think there's anything in the UFC in it for the UFC. Like, why would they want to book that fight? So that Pavlovich, a guy that's not anybody, can come in and dethrone John Jones. Like, if Stipe beats John Jones, it's still epic for the UFC. It's a story to tell. It's a big event that happened. It's a legacy, a huge legacy story afterwards. Like, there's a lot in it for them, either side of that. But, like, if Pav comes in and fucking knocks out John Jones in three minutes and eight seconds, like, yeah, I just feel yeah, like it should that, all any over. Card, the- any card with John Jones leading on it needs to be freaking out. I don't care who the fuck he's fight. You said it needs to be what? Anybody. It could be anybody. If he's going to fight anybody, they, they should have him on the card. I, I don't think it really matters. Like, yeah, 
we can sell it and it looks pretty good with the Stipe fight just because it's the goat talk and all of the things. But in the future, after that, John Jones can fight anybody and that card is going to rock after what he did to Cyril Gunn. I agree, but what I'm saying is, is like they're still going to want to give him Blades or someone else that it seems he would could beat, bro. Pav is the biggest problem. They don't want John to lose. I don't care if he retires with the belt. Dana White's not going to care, bro. He does not want John to lose. I, I, he just doesn't. There's, I don't think he's going to lose in that division. It's heavyweight division. So he he looks like a fucking monster. I don't know if how many times you guys have went back and rewatched that gun fight. I could probably almost tell it to you beat for beat, man. Like. He fucking destroyed that guy. Like, I don't care what anybody says about the nerves, this, that, whatever. Whatever caused it, John capitalized on it. No fucking question. Um, With that said, probably just roll into the card, man. Um, I don't think Usman is here yet, but he usually shows up around 1030. I don't think he's on early tape. So, and if he is, fuck it. We'll skip it and go back. Who gives a shit? It's Usman, right? Um, oh, he's not even on tape this week. Hmm. Oh, he was. His fucking fight got canceled. I hope he didn't do the fucking tape, bro. Ah, oh, I feel so bad if he made it all the way through fucking tape. He only had one and it got canceled, bro. He did do the tape, bro. We talked about that fight for quite some time. <laughs> Happens to all of us. And then, and then you guys sent that shit about Pete pulling out. And I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. I'm telling you, we were talking about it because I'm sitting there going, I don't know, bro. Anytime I see someone at, as a big favorite and they, they don't deserve being that big of a favorite, I always think about it. So then he starts breaking down tape between how bad Pete's fucking takedown uh, defense is and how terrible he is on the ground and putting himself in bad positions. And, and then he just goes back to Levy and talking about how, you know, how he's susceptible to the body and stuff. It was just, it was funny as fuck when that happened. Yeah, that's fucking ah, that shit. He's probably protesting. I would. Um, anyway, um, UFC Fight Night two twenty three or UFC Vegas seventy two. Apparently, we're gonna make it all the way to at least seventy five because I seen something in the past week or two that they just submitted that they're gonna do three more shows at the apex than planned so at least three more yay um the original headliner was armin uh sarukian versus renano moicano um that got canceled that was lightweight bop that got canceled moicano was forced to withdraw due to undisclosed injuries according to espn uh, so uh moicano all- tore his knee up is that what it was yeah, he posted a video today. Okay, okay, I wrote that. Yeah, he's up. on uh, crutches right now. He just got surgery. They that said he's. Sucks. They they said the recovery time for that is four to six weeks. And then you have to imagine he'll probably, you know, work himself back. Maybe give him a few more months after that. Well, I guess six bet for a knee, six months total ish. That isn't too bad, to be honest, man. Knees can be much yeah. worse. I'm not trying to belittle the injury in any way, but man, it could be way worse. So I guess that ain't too bad. Um, and it, Emily Decody versus Pollyanna Vienna, Pollyanna Vienna, was uh, F's woman's straw weight was postponed to May twentieth uh, on the Pennington Aldana two card. Uh, when I looked it up, the reason that the fight was postponed was still unknown at the time. Um, no idea. Uh, Josh Quinlan was supposed to fight Ang Losa Ang Losa at welterweight. That was canceled. Um, I'll be honest. It's completely unclear to me why I haven't looked in the past six or seven hours, eh, probably past three or four hours. I was looking not that long ago. I'm not exactly clear why. Um, why it all fell apart again after it was fell apart before, but he's fighting Trey Waters now on super, uh, Quinlan is fighting Trey Waters now on super short notice. And then as we just talked about Nathan Levy versus Pete Rodriguez, that lightweight was canceled. Um, fight was canceled today at the time due to undisclosed 
uh, reasons on the Rodriguez side and the book has, and according to Twitter, the fight has been rebooked for UFC Char- Char- Charlotte on May 13th. Um, man, I am stumbling with my words today. I got the hiccups. This is kicking my ass. Um, Andrew, you doing tail of the tape or you want me to do it, bud? I got it up. All right. Uh, we'll kick it off. Uh, what you got first? We have a uh, women's bantamweight bout. Seems like Haley Cowan's finally going to see the cage as she takes on the uh, UFC debutant in Jamie Lynn Horth. Um, Haley Cowan fights Southpaw. She is uh, five foot eight with a sixty-seven inch reach. She is seven and two currently, and she will be facing an undefeated Jamie Lynn Horth, making her UFC debut. She is an inch shorter. Uh, it doesn't list her reach, but she does fight orthodox. I have nothing on this one. I'm going to be honest. I know Gary was talking about it, but I don't see him in here. So go ahead, Joe. Um, man, this Gary, did I, I don't know if I hit him with the invite. I try to hit everybody that's on the list. Um, no, no, no. Will was on this fight on tape, but hold on. So Cowan is a uh, seven and two, four and one in her last five, one and oh on the contender series. Um, I've taped her and then reclipped her and, um, Yep, her game plan will be to clinch, grind, take down, control. Um, anybody at the UFC level, even entry level, she's not going to have much of a choice. Uh, fight likely goes the distance. Uh, Jamie Lynn Horth is 5-0, and making her UFC debut. All five were by finish, but all five were over 1.5 rounds. At TKO, TKO, RNC, KO, RNC. Um, I'm on the over 1.5. If I could bet same, if I could bet same day or fight day cancellation, if I could get an, a line on that, I swear to God I would bet it. Haley Cowan is fucking jinxed. I bet this fight gets canceled the day of, but I will parlay the over 1.5. Uh, in their last 10 fights combined, only one fight has ended under 1.5 rounds. Uh, Will was on tape. What you got on this one, bud? Yeah, so not much. But Haley Cowan, she's like you said, she's going to want to clinch. She's going to want to grind you up against the fence. She's going to want to get that takedown and stay on top control. And, I mean, I would probably give her, like, probably 6 out of 10 at doing, like, level skill-wise. Uh, I had surgery this week. I didn't get to tape this other girl. Been kind of busy recovering, so uh, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't really know anything about this Jamie girl. and But I'm going to bet Cowan because she's interacted with me before. So, you know, that's my girl. I got to – I gotta, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to take Cowan here, Cowan by decision. I don't know anything about the other girl, but, yeah, that, that's – You sound right. like my wife picking people in fights when I'm watching it with. So, D-Baby was looking for tape on – Jamie Lynn, and I ended up trying to Google it, and I ended up on MMA Core. Um, I found one of her fights, and it was three fights ago, I think. Um, and it was it ended pretty quick. That was it. There's not much out there that I found to tape on her. Just so you know that dead picks. Go ahead. The only thing that I would have caught. I have no take on this fight, but I did find what they call it, two of her fights. What they call it with this site that I'm using. Uh, it's pay subscription. I don't want to plug them because you know they're not they're not giving us anything. So you know, we'll we'll talk about that later. Me and you, Joe. Anyways, uh, yeah, I always found two of her fights: Jamie Lynn Horth versus Myra Cantuera and versus Cor Corin. Laugh for a boys. So if Will or whoever wants that, if you guys want those fights, let me know. I could get you guys the link to that. But there's really only two fights. So so one of those be... fights was she labeled? Was it labeled wrong? Like was the video labeled wrong? She was in the video, but it said it was someone else. Dude, I looked around. I couldn't. I couldn't fucking find it. Uh, I don't know. These are on Fight Pass. What do you call it? So her name's probably like was under some different name because. Fighters do that sometimes. They be fighting under different names, and then you can't find their tape because, you know, a lot of these, this site doesn't, you know, give them, I don't know, but the, 
Either way, if a fighter changes their name, you know, they're going to come up different and you can't find the tape because it's all, you know, spurted out. So that's probably what she did. I, I have no idea. But there's literally only two fights in the regional. So you're not going to be able to draw a lot from these anyways. Like I said, regional tape is never good tape. Yeah, I'm going to lap this one out. No one's got their hand up. and Bro, we have spent so much time talking about Haley Cowan waiting for her to fight. Um I hope she comes into space one day. Would love to interview her because I've spent a ton of time fucking capping her fights. Like, fuck it. It is what it is. Like, yeah. I do see that the lines flopped. Like, Did how, they? Yeah. So Haley actually came off as a minus 205, and now she's a plus 117. So huh. looks like a lot of money has kind of popped in. It, it went – Minus 106 for that Jamie Lynn, and now she's a minus 144, and that's from the 24th. You know, so just in a day, she's dropped quite a lot. So there's a little bit of a change in this uh, line. So I don't think it's a bad idea to throw somebody in a parlay. Ah, she's Canadian. Just fade her. Yeah, it's Canadian. So, I mean, obviously just going the decisions, they are all going the distance and overs. All right, all right, all right. Lap. Uh, Andrew, what you got next? Staying in the Bantamweight division, but we're going over the men. We have the Wiley vet, Brian Kelleher, versus uh, Journey Newson. Brian Kelleher is coming off a little bit of a losing streak. He's 24 and 14. Uh, he's five foot six with a 66-inch reach, fights switch. And he's fighting Journey Newson. Newson is 10 and 4. He's an inch shorter at 5'5", five five, but he has an inch longer in reach. And he's fighting orthodox. I actually have the line. Kelleher is minus 133 currently, and Journey Newsom is uh, plus 113. Over 2.5 is minus 155. Under is plus 125. All I know is Brian Kelleher, when he's a favorite, I don't like to bet it, but I didn't tape this because... I just don't have any interest in this fight. So, go ahead, Joe. Man, uh, yeah, that's a tough fight here. Uh, Kelleher, 24-14, 2-3 in his last five, 8-7 in the UFC. Coming off two first-round rear naked chokes, uh, losses to Mario Batista and Umar Nurmagomedov. I know some people talk about, like, quality of competition, so, like, I, I know, and I know sometimes that's relevant, but, man, you go out there and get fucking manhandled twice. Um, yeah, fuck it. It just is what it is, bro. It's going to affect you. It's just going to affect you. Um, Newsom is 10-4, and four, uh, one, three, and 1-3-1 um, in his last five and in the UFC. Uh, Newsom came into the UFC hot, bro. He was 9-1 and one when he entered the UFC in 2019, um, and he, he's just struggled. Like, if you've watched, he's just struggled. Um, Brian has a clear takedown advantage. Um, I don't need to tape it to know that. He has. He definitely has the takedown advantage. Um, it's arguable that he has a power advantage, maybe. I mean, like, the dude's got knockout power, but I don't feel like we've seen it. I, I feel like it's kind of faded off. So, um, with all that said... Um, I'm not interested in betting this fight. I think this fight is a true 50-50. I don't think the over or the under is safe. Like, if you're going to take round two to start, yes, or something, like, all right, fuck it. You're just trying to build some parlays. I'm not mad at you. But even the uh, over 1.5, I wouldn't even call safe in this fight. Um, These dudes both have plenty of recent fights to show you that none of that shit is safe with these guys. Dead Picks was on tape. What you got, bro? Ugh. That's really how I felt taping this fight. Um, so, uh, man, I'm not going to be betting this fight, just to let you guys know off the back. But I will be siding with Journey Newsom. It's kind of, you know, hard to make that decision, but it is what it is, man. He's He only has one win in the UFC, three losses. And it's like, Man, I, yeah, you just, he's an underdog. He was a wider underdog when he, uh, when this fight opened up, and I noticed that he did get bet down a bit. So I could see the points and where people, you know, would want to bet him. 
you know, Brian is coming off those two losses, you know, like you said, from the rear naked choke. Uh, but to be fair, you know, they, it was Cousin Umar and it was fucking Mario Batista, you know. So, um, Kevin Kroom in that fight, he didn't look too hot either, you know. Like, it was like, it, he was just putting up the better of the, the strike, the striking, you know. And that doesn't say much going against Kevin Kroom, you know. Like, it, it just didn't look very impressive and it didn't look very aggressive, you know. So... And then if we go down to that Domingo Paliche fight, it's probably, like, one of the best fights that he's, like, looked, you know, his best in, you know, for, like, a while. And that was, like, about, like, uh, a little over a year ago, like, a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, all he did was just hold him down for, like, fucking about 13 minutes. There was about two minutes in that fight where, like, there was a scramble, but nothing really happened, you know, that, w- that would indicate that, you know, that he could be put in danger. All it showed, you know, that was that he does have the takedown advantage in this fight. The thing with Journey Newsom is, is that uh, I don't really, um, I, I would trust his takedowns more if he could just, you know, hold him, hold his opponents down more. But that's just not the case with him. Like anytime he gets a takedown, he just he doesn't hold it down. You know, like these these guys get get back up. Like it, it showed in the Ricardo Ramos fight, and it showed in the. Bernie Garcia fight, like, he just can't hold anyone down. So, obviously, we take that out the window. But the thing that I did notice is that Brian Kelleher does like to... He's very inviting in terms of the ground game. Like, he will, uh, like, pull guard, I guess you could say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. He pulls guard. Uh, he, he grabs the neck and he, you know, falls on his butt, you know, and he just ends up on his back. And you could you could hold him down for a good, you know, few minutes. But the thing is with Journey, he, I don't... I'm not sure if he's, if he's going to be able to have that size in him to be able to do that. Uh, Brian does seem like the bigger guy in terms of uh, mass. Uh, and the thing with Journey is, so he doesn't really fight well against the bigger fighters, is what I've noticed. Like, when you're fighting, like, on his, like, same size, like, when you're fighting the same, yeah, when, when you're the same size as him, same height, whatever, that you could, that's when he has his most success in terms of on the feet. Uh, man, I'm just going to, pick journey i think he does have a chance of getting a sub just because like i said uh brian being inviting you know if maybe journey could like scoop up a neck like in, in the clinch or something but uh, i don't know that would be the super that would be the super prop of anything a sub the pick would be journey i'm not gonna be betting it but if you know like i said guns ahead if i had to i'll probably be picking journey i mean he's probably fighting for his job at this point uh, he only has one win, like I said, and that was like against Rennie Garcia. That was his like the second, yeah, his not even his last fight. His last fight he lost, so like he only won. He only won a fight like you know two fights ago. He's got to be hungry, right? I mean, Brian Kelleher should be off a of skid. I'm probably gonna get this one wrong. It's, it's what it's whatever. At the end of the day, I, I'm gonna side with Journey. Uh, yeah, I'll take I'll take Journey, younger guy, whatever. I ain't mad at it at all, but sometimes watching tape shakes the shit out of you, makes it hard to make a pick. And when I never hear guys shook on tape, it tells me that uh, they're not watching them as hard as they should. With big respect, I've heard Andrew shook on tape. I've heard other guys shook on tape. You've heard me shook, shook on tape, bro. Sometimes you watch it and you just realize, like, fuck, there's nothing to bet here. Um, anybody else on this fight? Oh, yeah, one more thing. If anything, I probably say the decision's probably safe. If anything, I'd probably take the over and a parlay of anything, but yeah, I'm, I'm super probably sub. Pick will be Fernie, and then another prop out there would be the over. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Well, nobody's got their hands up. That's uh, almost eight minutes right there. Just me, you, and Andrew, Dev Picks. Andrew, what you got next? Bro, we're staying in the Bantamweight division, but we're going right back to the women. This is exciting, man. A lot of Bantamweight fights. We have uh, Stephanie Egger facing Russian Ronda, Irina Alexeva. Um, Egger is 8-3, and three, five foot six with a 68-inch reach. She fights Orthodox. Irina, on the other side, fights Orthodox as well. She's a little bit taller at 5'8", but her reach is not listed. She is 4-1, and one, making her UFC debut. Um, yeah, man. this I don't want to be like 
the Debbie Downer, but this card is just something else, bro. <laughs> so go ahead, Joe. What you got, man? Okay, so Edgar is eight and three, five, uh, three and two in the UFC, three and two in her last five. Um, no, that's not correct. I probably have her records wrong, but she's three and two in her last five. Um, Irina Alec. Russian Ronda is four and one in her last five, one and zero in Bellator, making her UFC debut. Um, yeah, man, I'm just gonna shoot it straight. I think minus three hundred uh, on Irina is fucking crazy. Um, yeah, I think if it gets to the ground, um, Edgar catches an arm. Um, Irina's in just as much danger as Edgar would be. I think Edgar's a bigger danger from the back. Um, if you, I mean, you can you can tape the shit out of it all you want. I've I've looked, I've watched this Russian Ronda. I say her last name wrong. Um, Alexvi, Alexvi. I don't want to butcher it, man. Irina. I'll just call her Irina. Um, when she first came around, like she was a big deal. Everybody was talking about her uh, in a group I was in and shit. So I don't know, man. But uh, I just don't. I don't buy it yet. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not betting huge against her, um, but I probably will bet the fight to go the distance. No, and I probably will um, put a very small bet on Stephanie to win by sub. Um, I just think it could happen. Anybody else watch watch tape or on this fight at all? Cricket. <laughs> Crickets, crickets, crickets. <laughs> yes, sir. I wish I had. This is like the effect. worst freaking prelims I've ever heard of. Bro, I'm not mad when when it's crickets though, man. Sometimes some fights just ain't worth more than two or three minutes, bro. And that's all bro, right. Bro, it's because every fucking fight is a Dana White contender series fight, man. They keep breeding their own, so they don't have to take from other companies. They want to build them up their way, and so all these it's a bunch of fucking either vets. Who are past their prime or a bunch of young cats who we have no idea who they are. <laughs> I I agree We're with a lot nickel. of that. Um I'm gonna see Bo Nickel fight in July, so fuck it. Uh I'm gonna laugh it out at three minutes twelve seconds. Andrew, what you got next? Who's echoing? Mute your mics. Andrew, what you got next? Next we probably have one of the more exciting and more entertaining fights on the card. We're going to the flyweight division. We've got Cody Durden versus Charles Johnson. I'm actually really excited for this fight. Um, Cody Durden is 14, 4, and 1. There's is- Josh versus Trey Waters, I think, who's next. Yeah, that's all right. We'll switch him. He just got him backwards. It is supposed to be Waters. It doesn't matter. Go ahead, Andrew. We'll just switch him back. Sorry, I'm on UFCstats.com. <laughs> that's the one I use, too. I see it's different on, uh, on some other sites, though. So go ahead, bro. So Durden is 14, 4, and 1, uh, 5 foot 7, 67 inch reach. He is a southpaw uh, facing Charles Johnson, who is a switch, 5 foot 9, a little bit taller, 2 inches, and he's got a longer reach at 70 inches. Um, he's 13 and 4, um, coming off of a little bit of a losing streak. I think this is going to be a really exciting fight. Um, to me, it's going to come down to if Charles Johnson throws the volume. If he throws the volume, He's going to land. Um, Cody Durden loves to pressure, and he loves to come forward, and he's going to try and get you down. Um, I know Charles really struggled with Mikhaev. He just he couldn't get him off his back. Once he clinched those hands together, he just couldn't get him off. Durden's going to try to do the same thing. Um, he's a wrestler. That's just what he does. Uh, when he does throw, it's going to be a bunch of looping rights. He throws everything with power. He's a typical wrestler, man. Like That's what wrestlers do. They either wrestle – or they throw a bunch of looping lefts or rights, depending on how they how they uh, d- depending on their stance. So this is going to be fun. Um, I kind of want to take Charles Johnson, but I really don't know, man. This is one of those where it can go. I can see it going either way based on styles. But yeah, go ahead, Joe. What you got, man? Um. So basic shit that I always look at. Um... Cody is 14, 1-1, one 3-2 one, in his last five, 3-2 in the UFC. Charles Johnson, 13-4, 3-2 in the UFC, 2-2 two two in his last – or 3-2 in his last five, 2-2 two two in the UFC. Um, 
So I didn't dig much into this fight because I'm a Charles Johnson fan. I actually like Charles quite a bit. Um, real bias. I've got that problem with two more, one more fighter on this card. Where I'm just a fan, bro. So like, no matter what I do, I am. I'm always like, oh well, he could beat him like this or like. Anything you ask me, I'll be like, ah. Oh, yeah. So good. I just, I'm a Charles fan. Um, I was actually surprised that Charles was a favorite, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, when I seen the line, I expected Cody to open as like a 150 and uh, Charles to be a plus 130. Maybe it opened that way, but by the time I seen it, um, yeah, Cody is the dog and Charles was a favorite. I was just surprised. Um, Dead Picks was on tape. I know Kate got his hand up as soon as this fight started. So Dead Picks was on tape, and then we'll get Kate on the mic. Dead Picks, what you got on this one, bud? For sure, yeah. I want to make this one quick because I want to give my the mic to Kate. But I'm gonna just let me get my two cents in because I I didn't really got much to say because Andrew pretty much nailed it. Uh, I'm picking Cody Durden just because I'm I'm what do you call it? I'm very uh, I'm very not worried, but. The question is, is Charles Johnson going to come out with, you know, the volume? If he's not going to be coming out with the volume, then I don't think he's going to win, you know. I could see, you know, Cody possibly, you know, getting some takedowns, you know, maybe, what do you call it, not getting all of them, you know, but Charles is going to stuff some. But I could see some getting through. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, you know, bad, like, you know, WrestleMania, but like, uh, with the, you know, like, it's just, I think he's more active on the feet, too. You know, I, I just think he's more active overall. I, I think he tries to stay more in your face. Charles is more, not passive, but, you know, he just, he just moves more. He doesn't really, uh, he doesn't, I, I would say he hasn't put the punches in bunches as much. So, if anything, you know, I'm just going to take a dog shot on Cody and just let it be what it is. Uh, I, li- I usually like Charles, but in this fight, man, where it's, like, you know, a little closer than... I could I could see you know being um you know a, a harder fight for him you know if it's gonna be him you know just trying to be on his feet you know not you know not putting up the numbers so if he's not like I said if he's not gonna be punching then fuck it I'll, I'm gonna take Cody. Very nice, bud. Um, you got a prop on that? I'm not holding you to, and I'm just asking how you think he gets it done. Nah, if it's the prop, I'll probably just take an over decision. I don't yeah. see no knockouts, no no uh, you know, no finishes or anything like that. Yeah, bro, Charles isn't gonna finish. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think so either, bro. I don't think but, so either. But Kay, here's the thing, Charles got... Johnson can knock him oh. out. If he catches him, because he's accurate, that's the thing. Charles Johnson doesn't throw a lot of volume usually, but when he when he throws, he lands, bro. He's he's very accurate. He's got some strength. I think he can knock Durden out. I don't think he will. I, I'm with dead picks. I think it does go to a decision. Yeah, I'm with you though. See, that's my problem as a Charles fan, bro. I think I, I think he could. I think he could. I'm just being honest, bro. Like that's the problem when I look at it. So I didn't even dig into it. Cade, what you got in this fight, bud? Give me the over and give me Cody Durden. I think Charles Charles takedown defense is like sixty percent. I'm not saying that's really bad or nothing like that. I ain't taking no digs at him, but uh, I think Durden can take him down, bro, to be honest. Put the pressure on him. Get him against the cage. Play fucking pillow fight. Get a leg. Get him down. I don't know, man. Probably decision win. I don't think Cody finishes him. Charles is a tough finish. Andrew said it best. Uh, Yeah, give me Durden at the dog if I had to pick a winner. But realistically, I don't know what the lines are, but they're not too bad. Over is not bad either. I don't think anybody gets finished in that fight. Yeah, I can't. And I'll be honest, you guys taking Durden, I totally understand. I was, uh, man, I really thought Durden would be the, the favorite. Like, I'm not, I, I like Charles. Like I just said, I'm not even going to be on this fight because I like Charles. But, like, I, man, I really thought Cody would be the favorite. And, like, I'm checking it right now. He opened Did- it up, too. Didn't he Charles opened. drop his last fight to Ode, uh, Osborne? Yeah. Yep. That... It's like a super close fight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know, man. Like, I felt like Charles had a lot of opportunities to win that fight, but he just didn't. And I just, I, I don't know, man. I feel like Durden's the type of guy that he has that it factor with the wrestling. I'm not saying, like, he's going to fucking probably hold Charles in one position for the whole fight, but, I mean, I feel like he'll get his takedowns, and they'll, or at least they'll be there for him to get. So that's kind of why I lean him, to be honest. So what I will say about Charles Johnson is that – um he did slow down in his last fight, but he doesn't normally slow down. Like his cardio is usually fine. His problem is he kept taking short notice fights. I mean, it's it's just it's not very smart, depending on how you look at it. But he has a full training camp now for this fight. I don't think his cardio is going to be an issue. The question is, can he just can he keep Durden off of him? If he can keep Durden off of him and create that space, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be successful. Gary, what you got? Yeah, I think. I think for Charles, like, his best path is a knockout, honestly, or, like, Durden getting sloppy and Charles catching, like, a guillotine or something like that, which I don't really see as likely. Um, I think majority of this fight, like, 10 minutes plus, will be Durden head, forehead right in Charles' upper chest and grinding up against the cage. I think he'll struggle to get takedowns. Like, he'll probably land one or two, but I don't think he'll control Charles that well. But I think he'll spend the most the the pass, passivity of Charles is what will bite him. Durden's just going to be in his face. He's going to get to the cage, and they're just going to stay there for a majority of the rounds. Yeah, the over two and a half is is chalk right now. It's minus two ten. But I mean, barring something fucking insane, it that's free, bro. That's that's free money right there, in my opinion. <laughs> I just I don't see any likelihood for a finish unless. Uh, yeah, I think what Gary said about him getting caught and Gilly, but it's a long shot, you know. Yeah, I also see Charles being able to clip his ass in the second round early on, too, if I'm being honest, man, like knowing like this motherfucker's going to try to grind me and going out there and putting the work in. So but that's bro, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And I know when I like somebody, I'll argue for them. So I'm trying to be honest about that. I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I like this dude. I, I like him in the cage is what I'm saying. Like, I like watching this guy. I think he's slick. I think he's a uh, – I think he – I don't know. I like him. Um, anybody else got any takes or any bets on that fight? Mm, that perfect fight, 9 minutes 55 seconds. Andrew, what you got next? So I don't even have the Quinlan one next either, but we can wait, wait, one. wait. Yeah, I was going to say, let me get the next one because I noticed that that one's not on there, but it is booked. So Josh Quinlan was supposed to fight uh, Angelosa and it got canceled. Um, yeah, it's Trey he Waters. Got, yep, he got rescheduled to fight Trey Waters. Um, so I got a little bit of tail of the tape because, you know, UFC stats, I didn't get their pages up. And Trey Waters, I don't even know if he has one yet. Quinlan is uh, six foot five. Um, okay, I did get the I did get that shit up earlier. Quinlan is six foot with a six seventy two inches of reach. Quinn uh, Waters is six five. 77 inches reach he's got five inches reach and five inches height on quinlan he's going he's the 155 underdog quinlan's a 145 favorite quinlan is six and oh um with a win turn with an overturned win no contest for insect doping um that he had i believe on the dana white contender series so technically he's seven and oh or whatever um, and it would seem like they're just trying to set him up with anybody he can beat. Trey Waters is seven and one, four and one in his last five. The only fight he lost was uh, on Dana White Contender Series last September. Uh, he lost. He was the dude that uh, Gabriel Bonfin uh, shoulder choked him, um, and then and that was a first round finish. But then he got back to LFA real quick. He uh, got a knockout win. In LFA 56 over Jalen Puller, April 14th this year, uh, 11 days ago. He'll be taking this fight on a 14-day turnaround. Um, 
It is his weight class. It's the weight class he's always fought at. I went and checked the history. There's no history like where he's switching weight classes to do this to make it easy on himself to get in the UFC or anything like that. Um, he went out and got an impressive fucking win um, and got his shot back into the, or, you know, despite the Dana White contender deal, uh, got his shot in the UFC. Quinlan is a 145 favorite, like I said. Um, Waters at welterweight is six foot five um, with 77 inches reach unless UFC stats is wrong. Um, man, I've said this before. Sometimes the size doesn't matter how good you are at grappling when someone is that much bigger than you. Doesn't matter how good you are at striking when someone that is that much longer than you. Um, I will bet fight to go the distance. No. Uh, my pick is Waters, and I will probably parlay Waters. Um, Gary was on tape for Quinlan versus Losa. Gary, you got any takes on this? Did you did you check Waters out? What you got, bro? I have not gotten a chance to check Waters. This is actually my first time hearing about it changing. Um, or I shouldn't say that. I knew the first fight was canceled, but this is my first time hearing about the new opponent. But... I mean, the only thing I really have to say is, like, <clears throat> what you said about height is pretty accurate. But also, when I think of, like, when I think of a striking battle between a knockout artist and a, a lanky guy that isn't elite or doesn't have elite qualities, I think instant KO. I think leaning back and KO, but that's without seeing any tape. So, Yeah, he's a guy that's got seven wins, three knockouts, three submissions, and he's coming in off of a uh, punch knockout, not a TKO. He knocked a dude flat fucking out uh, in LFA. So, um, And then he knocked a dude out last year in LFA with a fucking knee. Um, so, like, he's had some knockouts. Um, I w- I'm not prepared to call him. Um, it's also a lot of cans. Yeah, a lot of these guys do, though. A lot of these guys can't get into promotions where they can get good competition. So it's only it's been to one decision, one decision with uh, like a seven and two, one no contest, amateur record. Yeah, but Josh Quinlan. Josh He's been submitted Quinlan, three times. Short of Josh Quinlan, short of um, his last UFC fight, bro. It's not like he's fought killers, bro, and he's fucking. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't see it. He's been taking the distance or at least into the third round a few times. I'm not over arguing it. I just, I don't see a ton of up for Quinlan here, to be honest. Well, I mean, he's a filling guy too. Yeah. The filling part definitely scares me. Quinlan's a big favorite. Well, usually because he is, because it's a, a, a jump in. If it's the last minute guy who hops in making his debut, they usually lose. Does Does anyone have any info on that gym? I feel like I've seen Elevate MMA before. Not Elevation, Elevate. I feel like I've seen that recently before. Uh, it should be on, like, Fight Pass. Who's that? Who's there? That That's what I'm asking. I, I think I've seen it recently on someone, but I Whose gym is that? Of, of these guys, whose gym is that is what I'm saying. Oh, Trey Waters. That's Trey Waters, Jim. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, Sure Dog has him with Ludus MMA. Gotcha. Maybe that's wrong on ESPN then. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these sites, like, I've come to find talking to these fighters, none of these these fighters, yeah. Uh, Miranda Maverick, we found three sites with different gyms and shit. She's like, yeah, none of them are right, guys. Here's where I'm at. So, like, you just never fucking know. Uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, – anybody got any bets on this fight? Actual put money on it because I'll give you a mic. Otherwise, I'm going to lap it. All I'm going to say is we probably shouldn't parlay Quinlan just because – I know what he called everyone is on him and yada yada, but I don't know. There's always that one outlier, you know. If anything, probably don't put this in the top tickets, you know. Yeah, I think the 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 
I don't know, bro. Sometimes just a culmination of things. The dude's clearly in shape. He's clearly ready to go, taking a fight on two weeks' notice. It's his weight class that he always fights at. Huge size advantage. I don't know. Quinlan, I, I don't know, bro. Just to me, it seems like culmination of the storm, man. I would not. I wouldn't be parlaying Quinlan. I'll be honest about that. Fuck that. Keep him out of your parlays. This one could be a buster for sure. Uh, Andrew, what you got next, bro? We're going to the heavyweight division. This should be a super exciting fight. We have a uh, Martin Boudet versus Jay Collier. Martin Boudet is eleven and one. He's pretty big. He's six foot four. 265 pounds he usually cuts weight to get in there uh, he does fight orthodox with a 77 inch reach he's fighting jay collier who's fought in three different divisions um, he is 13 and 8 he's a little bit shorter at 6'3 uh, 78 inch reach and he fights orthodox as well let me pull up the line really quick where is it so Jay Collier is minus 114, Martin Boudet minus 106. The over two and a half is minus 135, and the under is plus 105. I've, man, looking at that, 135 actually sounds like a pretty decent price tag for that over because I feel like this fight's going to be a fucking clinch fest. So go ahead, Joe. What you got, man? Man, um, so... And, all right, basic, you know me, what have they done for me lately? Jake Collier is, man, I got screens glitching here. Jake Collier is 13 and 8, 3 and 2 in his last five, 5 and 7 in the UFC. Martin Boudet is 11 and 1, 5 and 0 oh in his last five, 2 and 0 oh in the UFC. Um, he may have even been, was he a Dana White? Yep, and he's 1-0 in on the UFC, or the Dana White Contender Series. Um, I do not know how Martin Boudet is the fucking dog here. I just, I don't get it. He's, I don't, I don't understand it for the life of me. Because he sucks. Yeah, he's going right. to knock Jake Collier's buster ass the fuck out. No, he ain't. He's, he's yes, a the video fuck game he player. Bro, all right, so were you on tape for this one? Go you ahead. You got it, baby. This Go guy ahead. is a, a – Boudet is a past video game couch potato that has lost weight and got into fighting. His last fight, he totally lost. That was a bad decision. He doesn't throw any heat. Uh, he's kind of all over the place. Sometimes he can do a pretty good pin job to the back where he sticks you to the side of the wall. His striking is not very good. He's got some solid leg kicks, but he doesn't throw them much. He doesn't hit to the body at all. I mean, if you look at the stats in it and watch his fights, he's only just trying to, like, hit, maybe land some strikes, but then he just wants to pin you to the cage and kind of act like he's going to take you down, but he doesn't really do anything. Uh, his record before getting into the UFC was all these quick knockouts and these finishes and stuff, and he hasn't been able to do that with real – talent and jake collier is a past smaller guy he actually just gained all this weight and he looks like a fat ass but he still moves really you know fucking quick and they're they size up pretty good together uh jake's got a hell of a chin he's really quick for a heavyweight uh he's got quick takedowns i mean he throws a lot of the same one twos that you could kind of time is his negative part on him but uh I mean, his chances of winning this fight, I say, are pretty, actually pretty good because this guy is not good. Uh, Boudet is not a very good fighter, uh, so I'm taking Collier. I don't think either one of them can finish each other because they both don't really throw that much heat. So I'm going with Collier as the winner. I'm taking my bet would be it goes the distance. I don't care who wins, but if I did prop bets, I would take the decision. Or I would take an over, you know, two or over two and a half. And that's all I have to say about that. Duly noted. I'm not going to argue about the level of competition. I've thought about dissecting the UFC heavyweight division, but 
it would really make me sad, and I decided not to do it. Um, anybody else on this fight? Well, then, that's pretty much what this fight deserves. Um, Andrew, what hey, you got I, next? Hey, can I ask a question real quick? What you got? Hey, uh, Rhino, why you, how did you know this guy was a, a couch potato? That he was a couch potato because they said it in two of his fights. They talked about how he used to be a, a just a big gamer who was playing 20 hours a day oh, is what yeah. they said. Uh, so DC was kind of joking about it and making fun of him. And so I wrote it down because I heard it the second time. At first I was like, was he talking about him or was he talking about the other guy? And then in the next fight, they said it again. And I was like, oh, so he's not even really that much into fighting. Like he got into jujitsu to lose some weight and that's how he got into this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So like maybe he's got some good talent that's made him look good, but his 11 and one record looks better on paper than it is when you really watch him. Cause he's, he's really not that, you know, heavy with his hands his strikings, not that great. So, like, he just didn't, you know, impress me when he got to the show compared to his uh, past game. But then Jake Collier, yeah. you know, he's been in this for a long time. I mean, he is a yeah, veteran. I, I think they're I've not giving Collier. him as much respect in some areas. Yeah, I've seen Collier. Uh, but yeah. if you say him, Boudet is one of these Boudet you know. did I, if you watch his last fight that he had against this, like, Lucas or something like that, uh, I'll say because it it's a different foreign name. Uh, but he, I thought, won, in my opinion, because it was like a close fight from both guys, you know, throwing strikes, and there really wasn't much in it. And it was a split decision, and I, I really think that he he completely lost that fight. So, I mean, I, I'm going with Kyle. Sounds good. I'm not arguing it. I'm not arguing it. Andrew, what you got next? Man, we're going to uh, the main card. We're staying in the heavyweight division. I know you're going to be pumped for this one. We've got Marcos Rogerio de Lima versus Joe's favorite fighter. Where is Waldo Cortez Acosta? I can't find him. Uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima is 29 and 1. He's 6 foot 1, 253 with the 75 inch reach. He fights Orthodox. He's, fa- he's facing the undefeated 9-0, and Waldo Cortez Acosta. He's quite taller at 6'4", with the longer reach, 78 inches. He is also fighting orthodox. If we look at the lines, uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima is minus 176, plus 151 for Where's Waldo. The over 1.5 is minus 148, and the under 1.5 is plus 118. Man. I think uh, I, I think this is where Waldo loses. I do think that Marco Sergio de Lima has a grappling advantage. I think he's going to get inside. He's going to push him against the cage. He's going to take him down. Um, I, I just feel like that's the way the fight's going to go. So the over one and a half actually sounds pretty good too. But go ahead, Joe. Uh, what have you done for me lately is what I look at quite a bit. Um, Waldo Corte or Waldo Acosta, um, nine and oh, five and oh, two and oh in the UFC, Delima 21 or 28 and one, three and two in his last five, nine and six in the UFC. Um, yeah, man. So I don't. I laugh when you say that Waldo's my favorite fighter. I kind of got pinned with Waldo because I knew that he was good enough to beat fucking trash ass Jared Bandera. Like I knew that was easy math. Um, I also knew uh, that he would beat Sherman. Um, I also know that he's going to beat Delima. Uh, he is bigger. He is longer. He is stronger. He has more volume. He has more cardio. DeLima doesn't actually take people down all the time. There's been fights where he takes people down, but those are people with weak-ass takedown defense. Waldo's proved to have pretty good takedown defense. Um, yeah, I'm not saying he'll finish him. I've, 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 Waldo did not, you know, he's got some knockouts on his record and it looks real good, but inside the UFC, that doesn't really seem to be the case that he's some big knockout artist. Um, 
but he'll still get it done. I don't know why Waldo's getting the push, but Waldo's getting the bills. He'll be uh, probably 12 and 0, 13 and 0 before they cash his ass out, and it won't be on a fucking UFC Vegas card. I don't know why. They just like this Bro, guy. Bro, why do you think they like this guy so much? I don't know where you're getting this shit from, man. Because Dana White likes the dude, bro. I've fucking told you guys this. I've, I've figured this out a long time ago, and I have. it has proved true. You guys have been like, no way. And then he won on the Contender Series. And you guys were like, no way. And then he beat fucking Jared Mandera. Then you guys were like, no way. And he beat fucking Chase Sherman. And then you guys are like, oh, Delima's going to be the one that stops him because Delima's this big, strong guy. Bro, Delima will look small. So, okay. Wall, but let me ask you something. You just mentioned Chase Sherman and Jared Vandera. Now, do you think that Marcos Rogerio Delima is in the same fucking like, uh, like tier as those two fighters? Because it's I, not even I, close. I, I think why Delima would I beat not, both bro. of those? I, he geez. hasn't had more than two wins in a row in like fucking his whole mm. career almost. Look and at who he's if- fighting, bro. But the Lima ain't that good either. The Lima's a, Bro, the, who's he fighting that makes him so good? Bro, he's old fighting Romanov. Well, old ass Garlo- Arlovsky. Um, Amiva uh, beat him. Uh, Romanov beat him. Uh, Struve beat him. He he beat, uh, yeah, bro. Like, he lost to OSP. He beat Maurice Green. Ben he Rock- beat Rothwell. Yeah, okay. I'm so impressed that he beat Rothwell that is no longer in the UFC. I'm so fucking impressed. I'm, like, hey, I'm like, still going to be here like asking you where's sucks, Waldo. He, and Lima's that's like fine. I don't, I'm not like a fan of the guy. I couldn't tell you a single thing about the guy other than for whatever dumb ass reason, he seems to be getting the push, bro. He gets fights that they just seem to want to build that record so they could cash it in. I don't know why it is what it is. Zaza was on tape, bro. What you got? Um, I don't think there's much to say after that debacle you guys had. But I would say um, I agree with Joe on this one. I don't understand the, the line. I'm going to side with Waldo. I think he has the better hands. He's a better boxer, better striker. Um, From watching tape, he did – a couple uh, defensive t- – uh, he defended himself from getting taken down. So, I, get, I feel like he's going to do that in this fight. And that's it. Man, can't argue with that. No, I'm just uh, – I don't know who was up first, Gary or Uzma, but I don't think I've heard Uzma speak all night, bro. It was good. Uh, it was Gary, but I was just going to say, come on, guys. It's pretty obvious why he's getting the push. He's a fucking six five, good-looking fucking baseball player. They're trying to just build a quick little story. Um, I do kind of lean Delima, but sloppy heavyweights, if, if these guys are relatively equal in skill, I'm going to hit that over, um, not pick a side. But uh, go ahead, Gary. My bad for taking your spot. All good. Um, I think I think Delima is gonna like leg kick the shit out of him for real, and then he's gonna get a hold of him. He's gonna put him up against the cage like it's out in the prison yard, and he's gonna be drooling over him for like I don't know eight minutes by the time he gets a hold of him. Yup, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah. drooling What's up, him Joe? is definitely how. Delima would fucking beat somebody. So, I mean, if that's the method you're taking, victory <laughs> by drooling decision, I can't really argue with that. Yeah. Uh, Vinny, what you got? <laughs> yeah, all I gotta say is Delima sometimes he looks like he's fucking scared. I don't know, man. I don't, I, I, I would take Cortez over to Lima anytime as well. I know that a lot of people don't like Cortez or. They think, yeah, I mean, he hasn't proven himself yet, but I mean, the guy is pretty, pretty young. He's coming up, so give him a chance. Yeah, at some point, 30 more start. than any day, you know. I mean, it's young for heavyweights. Bro, so and let Bill, me... I don't ever want to hear you disrespect Andre Arlovsky again. You put Listen. some respect on that motherfucking man. <laughs> Listen, though. So, to put this in a little bit of perspective, right? Just real quick. Um, could you guys think 
and I said this once before, and I don't know who was here. Could you think of 15 UFC heavyweights that could be Hello? in Bellator right now? Could you think of 15? Because, I mean, like, K. Sherman, Jared, I, the era. I can hear you. Joe's talking right now. I don't even hey, hear Joe. Call the air. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. If he can't hear me, tell him. To I'm going to bounce out and bounce back in. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so here's my point, bro. There's only 35 heavyweights in the UFC. If you cut out all those Jared Vanderas and Chase Shermans and all these guys that we consider gassers, that if they can't get it done early, it's boring to watch type shit. Like, you cut these guys out, bro. You don't. You have a top 20 that's only stacked in, like, the top 10. So, like... I don't know, man. I just feel like Waldo will get favorable matchups because they need to they need to build guys, bro. The UFC's heavyweight division is not even you can argue outside of their like top four, it's not even the best heavyweight division on the planet, bro. Like yeah, it's but bro, not, Waldo's not good, man. Heavyweight division well, heavyweight division. Yeah, but who do they have for their stars to beat up, Andrew? That's my point. Who do they have? No, I hear you. I hear you. Well, it's because it's a shitty division, dude. That that's the problem, is it's heavyweight. So I mean, I think this is a matchup, yeah, to give both guys a chance of knocking somebody out, because you know Waldo's really not that good, uh, but you also have DeLima, who's willing to put on. You know, he's you know, towards the end of his career, he's almost thirty eight. You know, so he's just probably trying for some bonuses. So this could be a entertaining fight. Maybe somebody goes to sleep. You know, nobody's wearing the leather in here unless it's Waldo goes on, like, a five-fight win streak. He is on a five-fight win streak. Uh, well, Uzman, what you got? Um, no, I mean, uh, all, I think all of us will agree, and everybody's saying it, that, that the heavyweights aren't that good and stuff. But if that's going to be the playing field, then how can we really say Waldo is that shitty? Because... We've only seen him a couple of times. I will agree if anybody wants to say we've seen DeLima show more skills. He's attempted takedowns. He's attempted leg kicks. He can throw. He'll grind you on the fence. But that's because we've seen him more. We've seen him up against some of the better talent like Andre Arlovsky. Put some respect on him. Um, but, like, we really don't even know how bad Waldo is. He's a young dude. He's learning. Um, he's young in his career. And, like, we were talking about those DeLima leg kicks. Uh, who didn't? What's his name? Who did he just fight? Collier or Sherman? Who threw a shitload? No, Vandero, right? Who threw a shitload of leg kicks and Waldo did a good job of fucking timing those leg kicks, eating them, and throwing right off of them and landing, and that's how he won the fight. Um, if he can throw a 95 mile an hour fastball, I want to see what he can do in PFL because I want to see how fast he throws that punch. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Even know how I don't even really know how shitty he is. So for us to just be like, oh, he's bad, but then also the whole heavyweight division sucks. Like, so if I was he's bad, live. he can have some success. I was actually live during that fight when he fought Vandera, and I, I mean, I saw something different than you. I think Waldo slowed down. I think those leg kicks were actually getting to him. The only difference is Jared Vandera's striking isn't very good because he's just honestly not very good. So it's one of those things where you can see the deficiencies in Waldo. So when he does face better competition, the things that he's not good at, like checking leg kicks, um, and I don't think he's very good at defending takedowns, yeah, dude, that thing's, that shit's going to catch up to him. I get the division's not very deep. I just I don't think this is a good matchup for him, man. If he clips him early, cool. I just don't know if he's going to be able to get fucking Hogerio off of him. I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that. And and I'll agree. I'll agree. We did see him slow down and stuff. But if you know me, um, I've always said I don't give a fuck if a fighter gets hit. If he can keep going forward and he gets the job done, who gives a fuck about anything else? Um, yeah, but also, uh, I mean, I... Uh, I'm not I'm not going to be fighting for either side big time here but I will also agree Waldo also doesn't seem like he hits fucking hard for how big he is he like he landed a lot of great shots on Vandera and I'm like yo can we put this fucking guy out already why did we have to watch three rounds of this shit um so <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know how hard he hits either so yeah I don't know what I'm doing what, talking in circles here I 100% agree with the whole don't know if he hits as hard as it looked like he did when he was on the regionals. But that's 12 minutes and uh, 45 seconds of 
Waldo cool. Acosta and Delima. So, bro, that's that what that MMA is. degenerates do, man. That's what they, that's what we do. We sit here and talk about like low tier fights, like Fuck at the yeah, bottom of is. the rankings, and we just yeah, blow yeah. these fucking fights up, man. Yeah, Every time, time because, Waldo. because there's opportunity to find spaces, the money here. They would feel like superstars, bro. They would not be like, yo, I am the undercard. They would be like, I am the main event. Have you seen these chat groups go crazy for me? Like, if Waldo knew about chat groups, bro, he would be like, I am the UFC's biggest star. Fuck you guys. That's how he would feel. So, I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, we're up to 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Andrew, what you got next? Man, we're rolling to the featherweight division. We got Juicy J, Julian Arosa. Facing uh, Fernando Padilla, I believe he is making his UFC debut. Uh, Julian Arosa is a wily vet, twenty-eight and eleven, but he is pretty big, six foot one, with a seventy-four inch reach, fighting southpaw. Fernando Padilla is fourteen and four, same height, but his his reach is not listed. He is opposite though, as an orthodox. If we pull up the line. It looks like Julian Arosa is minus 138, plus 118 for Padilla. Over two and a half right now is plus 126. The under two and a half is minus 156. So it sounds like uh, Juicy J is getting a finish according to these numbers. But I did not tape this fight. Go ahead, Joe. Um. So Arosa is... 28 and 10, uh, three and two in his last five, six and six in the UFC. Uh, Paul Dia, 14 and four, four and one in his last five, making his UFC debut. Um, he did not have to go through the contender series or tough or anything like that. Um, he is, but he hasn't fought since 2021. Um, that was something I noticed. Like it's been almost, it's been o- almost two full years since he's fought. May sixteenth, twenty twenty one. I don't know why he wasn't a guy that I spent a lot of time googling. Um, just something I noticed, man. Um, seems to me that he's getting a UFC contract for some reason, and he took it. Uh, he's a submission guy, uh, just based on what you can see on like Tapology and SureDog. Um, I don't know, man. This actually seems like statistically everything I can find on numbers when I Googled him a little bit. Um, I just don't see how he beats Julian. Um, but I, I got no tape on this. Uh, my opinions are based strictly on number. Someone does have good opinions on that. That would be Rhino because he did tape, bro. What you got? Well, I did see the exact same thing about Fernando being you know, inactive since twenty. 20- 21, which also was in May, so that is a solid, you know, just about two years I caught into that. But he's he's pretty good, man. Fernando's uh, tall and lengthy. You know, he's got some pretty good hands. He's obviously got a lot of uh, submissions in his early game. Uh, I watched a, a pretty decent fight in LFA against Nate Richardson, which was a little bit of a smaller guy, but also pretty tough. He went five rounds uh, with Spike, uh, Carly, or however the hell they say his last name, redheaded, bearded guy who was in the UFC for a second. Uh, th- that was a pretty decent fight for him to make it all three rounds with. I mean, his striking solid. I like uh, his chances against Erosa, who's kind of all around the place. You know, he, he puts a lot of pressure. He's got a solid chin. But he eats a lot of shots. And uh, a young kid coming in here who's obviously been fighting since he was in diapers. I mean, his freaking debut is April 18th, 2015. So this guy basically just grew up beating up people in the freaking recess. So I feel that I'm worried about Erosa maybe. I, I mean, if he takes it to the ground, He's obviously going into some territory with a guy who's got a lot of submissions in his thing. So he's going to have to stand with him, and he keeps his hands down too much. Uh, so I really, I'm, I'm feeling for dogs today. I don't know what the hell is going on. So I'm taking Fernando uh, for my pick. I mean, his money line's a good bet. You know, why not? Uh, could somebody go to sleep? And this could be an entertaining fight. 
So it's definitely kind of close. But I, I almost don't feel if we do see a knockout, I think Fernando gets the finish. I think if uh, Rosa wins, it's going to be a decision and it's going to be a war. So that's what I got. That's all I have to say about that. Um, I didn't tape it, man. I don't worry about Julian on the ground, though, as a guy who kind of likes him. I'm not saying I'm a huge fan, but I like the dude. We've watched him fight. Like Usman said, we watch these guys so we get to know him. Uh, I think uh, – yeah, I just don't worry about him on the ground. That's for sure. I know he's got game on the ground, but uh, not a fight I'll have anything on, to be honest, man. Nothing at all. So I'm not arguing with anybody. Is anybody actually betting this fight? I was thinking about a bet on Padillas. Um, but... Yeah, I put some money on him for the money line. Yeah, there's like there's a lot of love uh, for him, um, and the line's been bet down quite a bit. Um, I haven't. Got a chance to look into it too much as far as like tape to really commit to it, but um, I don't know. I, I do think he's fought like some decent competition, and he fought Spike Carlisle what four years ago when he was twenty two. Yeah, and went like, all, it, all three rounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Spike gases, so like it's concerning, I guess, a little bit that he didn't finish him, but like surviving against spike's pressure i think says a lot like i think that that means basically he'll probably be able to survive most of what erosa's got for him at least but uh, and they size up really close to each other too so that's why i'm even more on the, the yeah. dog stuff i think it's them. interesting and there's a lot of action on it for sure so i'm looking into it but i haven't got a chance to fully tape it Vinny, what you got All I got to say, man, Julian Rosa, no way, Jose, man. I'll take my chance with the new guy. Julian Rosa, it's horrible. Yeah, he just leaves his head out there, dude. I think this guy is just going to piece him up. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I, I, I'd i rather take my chance with the new guy, man. At least we, we got a chance. <clears throat> I mean, but let's be clear. This dude's path is submission and in. Uh, 38 fights, Arosa has never been submitted. He has 12 submissions. He's got, I mean, he's got as, as many submissions almost as this dude's got wins. So, I don't know, man. Julian Arosa is one of them guys that fucks up plans, bro. He's not great. He's had some shitty streaks. He does leave his chin out there and get knocked out. But I did not one time hear from the tape guy that I just listened to yeah, he's going to go out there and knock him out. I didn't, I didn't hear that at all. So, I don't know, man. Seems uh, seems smart to maybe. Bro, fake. are you in a, like an empty warehouse or something? Why am I loud? Leave him alone. <laughs> Sounds like you're in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> Does it sound like that? I'm in the garage. I always am. Oh, it sounds like you need some acoustic dude. insulation there. Fuck off. How about that? Did that <laughs> echo for you guys? Did that echo? The first thing I say tonight, and you tell me to fuck off. Right. Oh, okay. wait. I know what it is, maybe. I think there may be something on my fucking voice thing. I just don't hear, and I don't know. Did that fix that shit? Yeah. yeah. yeah I agree. Ah, yes. Okay. I hit a button. Did you take the cock out of your mouth or something like that? <laughs> in here, bud. Oh, oh. I'll take that one because I didn't even know I hit that fucking button. So I'll take that one on the chin. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a Julian Arosa fight versus a debut guy. Eight minutes is plenty enough. Andrew, what you got next? Man, next we're going to the middleweight division. We have... The grappling Adolfo Vieira versus the wrestling Cody Brundage. Uh, Vieira is eight and two professionally. He is six foot, 73 inch reach. He is fighting orthodox. Cody Brundage, eight and three, uh, same height, one inch shorter in reach. Uh, he also fights orthodox. Uh, if we go to the line right now, Adolfo is a pretty big favorite, minus 225. Cody Brundage, 190. Go ahead, Joe, and then I'll take it. I'll take it back after that. Um, I'm just gonna Brundage is three and two in his last five. Uh, Rodolfo three and two in his last five. Uh, 
th- two and two in the UFC for Br- Brundage, uh, three and two for Vieira in the UFC. Um, Cody's coming off a KO loss. Um, not really a big fan of either guy, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't have a problem with either guy. I'm just, they're not fighters that I'm real keen on. Um, Vieira is probably the side. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but he needs the submission, and Cody's never been submitted. Uh, if I'm betting and what I will look for in the parlays is the over 1.5, uh, I know some people are probably going to say, uh, that's not safe, but I think these two boys cancel each other out and it sees a little bit of distance. Andrew actually did tape though. So he's probably way sharper than me on this one. Andrew, what you got? Yeah. Um, I didn't know what to think going into this fight, but I feel like it's pretty clear. Um, We'll start with Cody. Cody's a wrestler, so typical guy. He's going to try to take you down. If it's standing up, he's going to throw an overhand right, and he's going to try to connect. What I will say to his credit is he does have a pretty decent jab. He throws it out there a lot. Um, He does do it to set up his takedowns. My problem with Cody Brundage is he he, he doesn't seem to get better. Like, I feel like he's the same fighter since he, since he got in, he got knocked out by William Knight pretty viciously in the contender series. You know, it is what it is. And then he makes his UFC debut against Maximov and just gets completely out grappled. Um, I just feel like Maximov is better. That's all it was is he's just more versed on the ground. Um, Cause he's got the BJJ advantage. Um, then he fought Dolce, got his first UFC win. However, if you watch that fight, Dolce was whooping his ass the whole entire time. And then, uh, Brundage caught a ghillie, which was smart, like credit to him. He pulled it off. But if you looked at his face, he was getting pieced up he was running around the cage. Uh, he faced Trayshawn Gordon next, and that was probably his best looking fight. Um, he knocked him out cold. You watch the replay. It's, it really is like one of the weirdest knockouts because, I, I think it's just because he got him on the temple and his lights went out because it really didn't look like he hit him that hard. But credit to him. And then he goes out and faces uh, Michael o- Ola Juchek. I don't know how to say his name. Um, who actually came down to division because he used to fight a light heavyweight. And uh, he landed a few takedowns, but he couldn't do anything with them. And then he actually got reversed on the ground, um, was on his back. And then Michael just had this this vicious ground and pound, which put him out. Um And then you go to the Vieira side. What I do like about Vieira is that he has gotten better as his career has gone on. And he's, he, he, he's, he hasn't had a lot of UFC fights or pro fights in general, because he's always just been a BJJ wizard, but he's gotten better. You know, when he faced Hernandez, uh, it looked like he was going to get the win, but then he gassed out after five minutes and then he obviously got submitted. Um, But he looked good against Safrov and he looked good against Pihota. Um, he really hunts that arm triangle if, if he's on top. If he gets your back, he's obviously hunting that rear naked choke. Um, he did this, he, he did that with Dustin. He actually, the fight against Dustin Stoltzfus is what impressed me because that's where I saw a lot of improvements in his striking. Um, he became a little bit more fluid, timed his punches a little bit better, and his striking defense actually improved because every fight he gets – just right down the pipe. He he can't, he has, he, he used to have really terrible striking defense, but he showed a huge improvement against Stoltzfus. And then even against Chris Curtis, man, Chris Curtis is a ranked fighter. I just I think there's, there's levels to this, right? I just think Chris Curtis is a much superior fighter. He ran into a guy who had excellent takedown defense. He couldn't get him on the ground. You know, he's not going to outstrike Chris Curtis, but again, he had good cardio. He got his shots in. He just wasn't as good. But I've seen the improvements in him. I think he's looked better as his career has gotten um, has has gone further. Um, I I think it could cancel out. However, I don't think it will. I Vieira is who he is, and Brundage is who he is. Um, they're not really going to try and sit there and strike the whole time. They're both going to shoot for takedowns. Um, Vieira has never been taken down in the UFC. Brundage has. So I see the I I just see the grappling advantage to. Um, to Vieira. If it stays on the feet, I, I, I still give it to Vieira. Like I said, he's improved. He's got a slick jab. Um, he's got a nice straight right and a nice overhand. And he's just got better striking defense. So I'm taking Vieira money line. Um, I'm still undecided on if I want to go decision or sub because I actually do think he can catch him in a sub. 
Um, cause he's actually pretty active when he has top control. He's either going to try and ground and pound you out or he's going to hunt that arm triangle. And then if, uh, Brundage turns over, he's obviously going to hunt the next. So I, I think as a super prop, you take the sub with Vieira, but I don't see Brundage winning. Great breakdown, bro. And I agree a hundred percent. If you're taking a prop, you take Vieira by sub. It is the fucking prop of the fight, in my opinion. Uh, great breakdown, bro. Great breakdown. Uh, anybody else want to follow that? I doubt anybody's going to want to follow that. Yeah, that's pretty much what I figured. D-Baby, fuck is you doing, bud? Oh, no, he just the shit money. out of me. He just went in oh, money. Over shit, there, you know. counting stacks. Nah. He probably just got all his money from that Davis fight. He's over there trying to count it out, probably. Yeah, he already blew that shit out something stupid. Nah, not even. Bro. I'm about to flip it, flip it, flip it. Hookers flip it. are not stupid, bro. They're people. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Don't be rude. Hookers are human beings. Hey, I got me fucked up. Hookers have rights, too, you, you know. You got jokes, huh, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, D-Baby, doing, baby? D -Baby, D -Baby tell them what we call them in Vegas. Man, I pull bitches naturally. What do we call the hookers here? Say, Street lizards? Say what? <laughs> Street lizards. Ah, uh, shit. Nah, listen, bro. I'm just clowning you. I know you. I, I know you ain't. I, bro, I'm just clowning you, bro. I'm just clowning you. Uh, I'm actually waiting for the homegirl to pull up. I was about to get in on the... Uh, the Cody Brundage fight, but uh, yeah, give me Cody Brundage. Yeah, you taking him money line or you taking him to finish? Money line. Man, you got any how confident are you? On Hold on. On a scale of one dollar to ten racks, how confident are you? Oh, five dollars, man. <laughs> <laughs> This ain't no tank fight right now. Hell no. <laughs> he said five dollars. <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. All right. Um, Andrew, what you got next, bro? Man, we're staying in the middleweight division. We got my boy, Kyle Bahayo, uh, fighting Michael Ola Shuchek. I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize. Um, Kyle is... 13 and one with one no contest. He's five foot 10, 75 inch reach, and he does fight Southpaw. Uh, my call is 18 and five. He is a little bit taller at six foot, uh, but one inch shorter in reach. He is also a Southpaw, so Southpaw versus Southpaw is always fun. Um, yeah, Kyle's just been getting steamed this whole fucking time. Right now, he's minus 374, and I'm pretty sure he opened up in the twos. Uh, my call right now currently is plus 309, over 2.5, plus 135, under 2.5, minus 165. Um, I think the fight is lined that way because there's an obvious pathway to victory. Um, since Kayo has gotten into the UFC, every single win he has is by getting people to the ground and then just dominating. And if you look at my call's career, that's what he lacks in. When he faces good grapplers, he gets taken down and beaten. So I just feel like the pathway is clear. If my call can keep it on the feet, he's actually going to win because he's a very slick striker and Kyo's striking does need improvement. So if my call can keep it on the feet, I actually think he has a really damn good shot of winning. I just don't think he is. I think Kyo's going to get him down. But go ahead, Joe. Uh, actually, bro, I'm on the very same page as you. Uh, Kyo's 5-0 and in his last five, 3-0 and in the UFC. Uh, Michelle is... Uh, Four and one in his last five, and six and three in the UFC. Um, him at plus two ninety, which is what I seen him. I think is crazy. I'm not telling you to run out and bet him. I'm not. I'm just flat out. If if he punches him and catches him, it's over. I don't. I don't care what anybody wants to say to me. If he clips him before he gets taken down, um, he'll fucking drop him. It's not a question. He will. He will fucking hurt him, and he will finish uh, Barrio. He, he just – I'm not, oh, go bet him. I just – I think the line is crazy. I think uh, Kyle is 
far more talented of a guy, like in the overall picture of an athlete and an overall martial artist. Um, I don't even question that he is. I don't want to put a scale on it and like dog one guy out. I just, he's, I feel like he's a better athlete and an overall better martial artist, but bro, if he doesn't get it to the ground fairly quickly and there's an early exchange and he loses that exchange, he probably loses the fight in that exchange. Um, yeah, that's just, just my opinion. But if he can get him where he wants him and hold him there and beat his ass until it's over, you know, Car, uh, Kyle just do what he does, bro. Uh, D-Baby, go ahead. Man, I just want to make sure I wasn't tripping. Hey, yo, Andrew, you, you said uh, Kyle won't get steamrolled? Say that one more time? You said Kyle won't get steamrolled? My bad. No, he's saying the line's getting steamed, bro. Yeah, the I said the line is getting steamed, steamed because Kyle's oh, a huge favorite. Okay. And then I said, well, there's an obvious reason why. Gotcha. Yeah, I got Kyle, bro. Yeah, I just – I. I don't know, man. Like I said, if Michael can keep him standing, yeah, he could probably knock him out. But yo, he, he can. He's he gonna can get taken out. down, though. That's the problem. <laughs> I agree, bro. I agree. But if he can keep it standing up, he can probably knock out just about any middleweight. And that's not like trying to up him, bro. The dude just hits hard. Like he just some guys hit hard. You know what I mean? And like, Kyle doesn't have the best striking defense either. So that's why I'm saying, like, if this were a striking battle, yeah, dude, I think Kyle gets knocked out. But it being MMA, he's a pretty damn good grappler, bro. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Kyle's what you got. Like, so when you look at percentages for so like striking defense, sixty percent. That's what you would consider like a, just like a test, bro. It's like a, it's better than a D, though. Like, I guess if you were grading it, that's probably like C level. You know what I mean? Striking defense. There's dudes that that get up over seventy percent, but sixty uh, percent isn't bad. But it's not like uh, Michelle is. Bro, he's 64%. Like, man, if this stuff fight stays standing, there is no safe money. Uh, if it goes where it's supposed to go, and I'll say it just like that. If it goes where it's supposed to go, uh, Barrio all day. But if for some reason he decides he wants to go out there and fucking stand with him, man, hold on to your fucking seat and clinch your ticket. That's that's my honest opinion, man. Like, Oh, yeah. If he goes out there and does some fucking dumbass Curtis Blade shit, yeah, obviously anything's possible, but... I think Kyle's smarter than that. <laughs> I do too, bro. And I actually think uh I'm so mad about that. Curtis Blade, Blade got I'm washed. I'm so fucking mad about that. That nigga got washed, bro. I thought Curtis Blade was him. Yeah. What happened? Hey Andrew. You should have just asked me, bro. I'd have told you that Pav was gonna knock his ass out he first. Scared. But here, I posted, he got scared. But here's I the thing Twitter tweets about it. But here's the thing. Because we didn't really talk about it because the space was all fucked up last week. Um, that is true. But, oh, fuck. Um, Curtis no, Blades was going to take is, him down. If he would have taken him down like he should have, and then Pavlovich, like, got up, was able to get up and then knocked him out, I would have been like, damn, bro. He even beat Curtis Blades and his game plan. But then Curtis didn't even try. He actually just wanted to strike with him. If he wanted to fill him out for, like, a minute, okay, cool. Fill him out for a minute, see where you're at. But then he got he got hit a couple times, and then you're just sitting there going, okay, now start timing something, start setting a takedown up. And then he didn't fucking decide to shoot until he got rocked hard. And I'm like, bro. I mean, congrats to Pav. Don't get me wrong. I'm just really upset at Blade's so, game plan. So here I was think the his thing game plan sucked. That. Here was the thing about that, right? Who, who did Curtis take down in the first round? Huh? Who has Curtis taken down in the first round? Um, what's his face? Fucking Drago. Yeah, that one guy, right? He doesn't typically do it, bro. He typically stays on the feet in the first round, and I knew that there was just going to be a huge window for Pav, and it's like, yeah, bro, I don't know. That was, I really like Curtis, and it, I was really torn on it for most of the week, but by the end of the week, bro, I just started posting the Pav stats. Like, this is fucking clear. This dude is going to fucking clean, clean house. Like, it, I don't know. It was a. Uh, I was tore because I I felt like Curtis was good, but you know what? Curtis just has poor low fight IQ, and he can't time shit. Like I don't. He just can't time shit, bro. And he's got piss poor fight IQ. Like in the overall picture, you could pick moments and argue with it, but in the overall picture, bro, Curtis does not. 
doesn't fight smart and yeah i don't know i really like the guy but yeah i don't know anyways uh we're on this next card right now we could go back to that one in a minute um anybody else on the barrio fight before i move on because we kind of derailed all right uh andrew last fight up what you got main event time man this is gonna be a fun fight i'm really excited for this we got Song Yadong versus Ricky Simone. Uh, Song Yadong is 19, 7, and 1 with one no contest. He is 5 foot 8, 67 inch reach. He is fighting Orthodox. Facing Ricky Simone, 20 and 3. He's 5 foot 6. A uh, little bit longer reach at 69 inches, also fighting Orthodox. If we go to the lines, currently it's pretty much a pick 'em. Simone is minus 116. Song Yadong is minus 104, over four and a half, plus 105, under four and a half, minus 135. Man, I um, I feel like, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I feel like what I said about the last fight is the same thing about this fight. I think if Ricky Simone can get Song to the ground and keep him there, we obviously know who's going to win. If they keep it standing, we obviously know Song's going to win. So that's what makes this fight so incredibly fun, actually. Um, I personally lean Ricky Simone. Um, I just feel like he's gotten better each and every fight. Um, Song Yadong looks good. However, he can he has the ability to get taken down. If he's getting taken down by Corey Sanhagen, no disrespect to Corey Sanhagen. But Corey Sanhagen's wrestling versus Ricky Simone's wrestling, not even close. Different dimensions. So... I'm leaning Ricky Simone. I don't know if I'm going to bet it. We'll see how froggy I'm feeling towards the end of the week. But I, I think this is going to be a fucking fun fight, man. I think this is going to be good. What you got, Joe? Man, so Song Yadong is actually um, three and two in his last five. Uh, or, yeah, three and two in his last five, eight and two in the UFC. Um Ricky Simone, 5-0 and in his last five, 8-2 and two in the UFC. Um, yeah, so way back at the beginning of the card, there was a fight. The uh, Which fight was it? The uh, Shit, I can't even remember where I told you I'm a fan of the guy, so I'm off for the fucking fight. Who's fighting on this card? I've already lost it. Anyway, I said there was another guy that I'm a fan of. So, Oh, Charles Johnson. So I told you there was another guy that I'm a fan of, so I'm just... Uh, you know, I find a way, find a way. It's Ricky Simone, man. I uh, I fucking love Ricky, bro. Like, I'm not like a, a Stan fan or nothing, bro. I just think he's a great fighter to watch. Um, yeah, me or my buddy, one of us have his signed fight jersey from one of his fights. I don't know. One of us has it. We boxed the shit up after we got it, and it's on the shelf marked who's is who's. But one of us got Paul Craig's fight jersey. One of us got Ricky Simone's fight jersey. Uh I don't know. They're both from cars. But anyway, we held on to it. We fucking like Ricky. Uh, I once compared him watching him stand when he gets to bouncing, like his movement forward and backwards to Blanca from Street Fighter. And I'm not even clowning him. Like, that's just what he looks like to me sometimes when he gets moving. Um, I'm totally biased. Um, he, he does have the better skills everywhere except polished striking um song has better polished striking he's got a better jab uh he can lean he, you know he can pull the shoulders back and still punch he can do all that shit a little better but outside of that you know the christmas the uh if it's a stand up on the feet and becomes a boxing battle outside of that i'm not worried about it at all uh i'm on ricky all day on this fight that's my dude uh who else is on this one so give me song man Give me song. I, man, I wouldn't put no 10 G's on that shit, baby. Nah, I'll man. let you know. I, I trust more bo- like I trust boxing more when it comes to shit like that, but I'm just fucking with you, bro. I'm just fucking. I'm just saying, bro, don't don't put no big bet on song, bro. He's gonna get fucking finished by Ricky. I'm so so what do you don't like about Ricky then? Uh I, I think uh I think he's gonna be slow in the exchanges when it comes to uh songs, uh Speed and combinations and shit. I think Song will be beating him to the punch. Uh, Ricky got a uh, 
mixing like the striking with the wrestling at the same time, like throw them off. But I, I, I feel like Song uh, getting better though with the takedown defense. But we'll, we'll see. Maybe on triple. Well, well and he took a he took a hell of a fight with uh, Corey Sanhagen, and you know he took a beating. But he also was hanging in there. He's got some, he's got some heart. Yeah, I beat him, man. He just got caught with that. He just got lucky cut, bros. I mean, I wouldn't say it's lucky. Nah, he, he he got beat up pretty good nah. in that. But he also held his own. Nah, he didn't get he beat held up. Held his own. He just got he just got hit with that one nice shot to where it cut his split his shit open. But he didn't get beat up. Well, that was part of. Come it. on, he bro. He got outlanded. He got outlanded significant strikes, ninety four to bro, 54, most of those bro. Were like, punches though. Like, yeah, we watched that That's shit. The That's the ones from Song, bro. Like, they both landed 130, but Corey had to. No, nah, I'm just fucking. I'm giving you a hard time. Corey <laughs> shot like 800 fucking takedowns that fight. So, yeah, whatever. Fuck Corey. I don't care. Come on, let's be real. Though. Bro, Corey, how how, how does fight. one dislike Corey Sanhagen? Like, I just, I don't get it. Bro, I ain't never liked what Corey Sanhagen or Dominic Cruz. Fuck both them dudes, bro. How about that? How about how Come about on. how about if someone said, "Yo, Corey Sanhagen or Dominic Cruz were gonna come into space," but they heard Joe in there say, "Fuck them guys." You wanna know how I would feel about it? I'd be like, "Yeah, but fuck them guys." That's how I would feel, bro. Fuck them guys. I don't care. Fuck them too. I don't care about neither one of them. Bro, did they steal your wife or something? What's going on? Why do you not like these guys? <laughs> nah, bro. Just certain. <laughs> Certain type of people you I know. feel bad for them now. Did they they butt hurt you or something, man? <laughs> nah, bro. Just like there's certain types of people that you just wouldn't fuck with. And there are two types of people I wouldn't fuck with in life at all. I like, I totally side of town. Corey I totally Sanhagen? agree with you when it comes to Cruz. Because I can't stand him. And if they get rid of him and they get rid of him broadcasting, that would nicely put Sanko right up at the front. No, no, nah, that's not what I'm talking about. It's a no, personality I thing. I don't need to shred them. We'll just say that they're not the type of people that I, I mean, bro. Like, if you don't like Dominic, I understand it because he's a very dry person. I actually like him, but I see, like, I, I understand why people wouldn't like him. But Corey, like, Corey looks like your fucking accountant down the street. He's very soft spoken and very respectful. Like, what's there not to like about the dude? And he's a very damn good humble. fighter. And he knocks people out fucking cold. Like, what's not to like about him? <laughs> nah, that's why Joe's my fucking boy because fuck Corey Sanhagen. <laughs> fuck Corey Sanhagen. I don't know if y'all saw me. I'm throwing up a hundreds and purple hearts. It's fuck Corey Sanhagen. Fuck Dominic Cruz. Hell hey, fucking yo. yeah. I need to go put my baby back to sleep later. <laughs> Go so, tell us how you really feel about them, bro. I'm just saying, like, all I'm saying is in real life, they would not have fared well in the neighborhoods that I fared well in, and we'll just leave it at that. And I'm not talking about fist fighting, fine, they're great fighters, that's fine. They just wouldn't have fared very well. They're not the type of people that I would fuck with in real life. It's just that simple. The one thing, Joe, would you fuck with me? I don't know, bro. You bring up some weird topics. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Think I'm going to be in fucking Vegas in July, so you'll be able to come through any old way. Um, man, anybody else putting bets on this card? I got me a little cool little baby parlay. Tell me about it. Yeah, we're going to have to start telling you on those, man. I'm looking at sitting here turning fucking $30 into two grand. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Tell me about it. See, I'm looking at uh, the over on uh, Cody, Cody Durden and uh, Charles. I got, yep. I got uh, Boudet. I got uh, who? Uh, well, y'all not fucking with song, so but I got song. And what's the last one I got? Uh, oh, and Kyle. That's my that's my four leg right there. Then I got my I got my little Hail Mary, but I forgot, I forgot what that shit was. I got to look. Baby, you got Trey Waters or Josh Quinlan? Damn, uh, that shit didn't pop over my book yet, but uh, I was looking at that shit. That shit kind of, that's kind of hard to cat right now. I ain't going to lie, but I, I'll pick the uh, the Asian dude. I think he's Asian, right? Josh Quinlan? Yeah, yeah, I got him. I, I would lean towards him, but I think I think Trey Waters, he, he pretty solid, though. Am I tripping? Bro, he's 
fucking five inches taller with five inches more reach. If the fight is close, he's got a huge advantage. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, I don't know, bro. I know everybody likes Josh. Like I told everybody earlier, I'm not saying run out and bet anybody I like, bro. These are just picks. I bet some weird shit sometimes, but, man, fucking, I like Trey there. I like Trey Waters there, bro. I'm going to, I'm actually going to try to tape that one in depth. Um, man, I see that as one where you could grab some money if you get it right, and it's fucking Trey. I'm, uh, yeah, I ain't mad at that. I'm not going to. Oh yeah, I'm on. I'm I ain't on telling too. anybody go bet it yet, but I'm on peak too. I need probably gonna laugh at me. <laughs> give me, give me. Yeah, sometimes, bro, you pick these spots. The other one, bro, the other one is fucking Martin Boudet at plus one hundred. Like everybody in here is giving me shit, baby. When you said you were on Boudet, I was like, nice, because I'm on Boudet on that shit all day. I think I'm taking over on that fight, bro. Yeah, I think that should go over. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, think go over. I don't, dude. I don't really see finish ability from either side. Yeah, I think it go over. I think it's gonna be a low volume, slow fight, and they're gonna fucking clinch on the cage. Because Jake ain't gonna fight him, fight him like how he did uh, Barnett. You know what I'm saying? No. Nah. He gonna take it. Jake ain't gonna fight him at all. I'm not even being an asshole, bro. Jake ain't gonna fight him at all. I'm telling you, bro. They're gonna. It's gonna be a lot of standing around and a lot of clinching. Like I, I just, I don't understand why that line is so low. And then they're gonna play video games after on the couch. <laughs> I, dude, maybe that's just a good spot, though, man. Every once in a while, you can come across a line. Like I know I brought this up a couple times, but I was look when before that Mospital Burns fight started. I'm looking at the over two and a half, and it was plus money. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, like. These dudes really think that Jorge's going to finish Gilbert. I'm like, there's no fucking chance. That was easy money, bro. Yeah, so I'm going to lap the end of this off, and we're not going to go at it too long because that was a beautiful space. Capped all the fights in under two hours, bro. I'm trying to get it to where we're like 2.30 and under because that's between breaks. Like, I know some dudes who listen to us at work, legit. Like, my buddy listens to us, so a couple of his buddies listen and he's just like, listen, bro, you got to be between breaks. You got like three hours, two and a half hours, but we're not coming back. So that's been my goal. But we got a little time here. Um, man, all right, I know we talk shit about it and we fucking ran it through the mud and all that shit. But like dead serious cap. No fucking who you like. None of that. Don't talk about the fan shit. Man, who you guys really got in the Gilbert Byrne Bilal Muhammad fight? Because I think Bilal just absolutely fucking walks away with that fight. I think it's five rounds to none, Bilal, bro. Like, man. no way, no bro, way. Bro, he's gonna put him no against the fucking way. cage. He's gonna man. put him against the cage and hold him there. That's what he's gonna do. He's going to put him in the fucking corner. Wait, Not even Shemayev. Shemayev couldn't even do that to him. He's dreaming, maybe. Nah, bro. Shemayev ain't. Yeah, Shemayev ain't. Whatever, man. Hey, wa- hey watch what you say. What, be out. be give... careful with your wording. <laughs> Gilbert Listen, Burns bro. is a freaking good guy. Listen, bro, here's ways. the truth. Here's the truth. Shemayev got taken the distance by Gilbert Burns. I was unimpressed at that moment. I was unimpressed at that fucking moment. I'm not saying Gilbert's not good. That's not what I'm saying. But let's be honest. Who in this room will put their hand up right now on the record and say, Gilbert Burns is UFC championship material all day? Who's saying that? Well, actually, that he can't what kind of question? Wait, any hands? There was a little bad boy. Anybody, anybody taking that? Anybody? Well, then I'll take it. Yeah, my. my All right, there that. you go, baby and Rhino, bro. He's not. He's not champion, bro. He's fucking. And you not. think Bilal is, bro? He's got a chance. Oh. Fucking Bilal. Is yeah. A fucking one trick pony. Man. It doesn't matter. So was so was the Magnum Adolf, bro. Sometimes all you need is one trick. Bilal is not Khabib, bro. Stop. I don't want him to be Khabib. I don't need I'm just saying, bro, people talking about he's one trick pony. Sometimes it only takes one trick, bro. Lots of UFC fighters have proven you can get all the way to that goal. Okay. With one I, trick. Yeah, him and Michael Bisping can talk about it at retirement camp. That's cool, bro. 
Ronda Rousey will be there to talk about it. Conor yeah. McGregor will be there to talk and about it. Matt There'll be all Sarah types of people the there to talk and about. We'll have a great time. That's fine. It will be no problem. Man, Demetrius Burns Johnson, is going to wrestle. Fuck Demetrius that guy, bro. Johnson and his versatility will be sitting at a blanket, having a picnic in the field by himself next door, while all the other one trick ponies are are playing together over here. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I don't think that. Muhammad doesn't have a chance of winning. I just don't think he's going to manage to win at all. It'll, if he wins, it's going to be a close fight. Man. All right. I mean, that's fine, but Bilal's still winning. Uh, Thomas got his hands up, bro. Go ahead. I think Aussie did too, so I'll go back to him in a second. Thomas, go ahead. Yo, I, th- I think I think Burns is going to wrestle. Fuck it, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Are you, you really think... um. Um, what's his name? Bilal's get a, a, a chance in that one. Yeah, I see. It. That's the question. It's the flip opposite, bro. I see Bilal Russell fucking Gilbert. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bet you twenty bucks on that one, bro. Bro. No way. So let me explain something to you really quick. I'm gonna explain mm-hmm. this to you really quick. Gilbert okay. Burns has forty-seven percent takedown defense. That's like. That's like, uh, I don't know if you're from the States. I don't know how you guys grade papers where you're from, bro. It's like D plus. I'm frustrated. Bro, it's, it's fucking horrible. Bilal Mohammed mm-hmm. has 92% takedown defense. Gilbert Burns is not taking him down. He's not. I don't care what you guys say to me. That shit is not real. Bilal Mohammed is not getting fucking taken down by Gilbert Burns. And if he does, it'll be once mm-hmm. and he will get back up in my opinion. Hey, we can have a friend to bed, bro. 20 bucks. All right. I don't know. I don't have these apps because I'm a fucking old man at heart. But I got PayPal, bro. I'll bet you 20 bucks friendly. Bilal's winning yeah, shit all day. You got PayPal, though. Listen, bro, I don't got this Zells or Cash No, I got or... PayPal. I got PayPal. Dude, he's Memo, already baby. talking about paying you. He's already talking about paying you. That's how we know. Bilal. No, I want to make sure hey. he knows how to get me my money. Yeah. I don't want to hear none of this shit. <laughs> Vinny's like, bro, we're going to Vegas. No, I got okay, PayPal, so I gotta bro. Go download Zell or some shit. I mean, I love him and I'm gonna do it, but I'm just saying for a friendly bet, keep it friendly. PayPal, right? Well, for sure, man. Man, for I sure. thought it was us. I thought it was us against the bookies. Y'all niggas want to bet him, bro? I'm just saying, he offered me a friendly free twenty dollars, bro. Would you not take free twenty dollars, <laughs> bro? Wait, hey, he's still us against bills, the bookies, bro. Baby, still us more. against the bookies, day, baby. He's passing out 20s, though, bro. Get you one. Aussie, what you got, bro? Yeah, I got your back in this one, man. Uh, I, I do like um, uh, Bilal here. I think, you know, Gilbert's real good nail, but if he doesn't get the takedowns, which I think he is going to struggle or at least face a bit of adversity there, I think he's going to gas out, man. And it's, if it's five rounds, I, I think Bilal wins four and five. He's only got to win one other round. So, And those leg kicks he's been added to his game are... Uh, you know, five rounds, fuck that. I, I, I like him five rounds. I'll bet him round four, five or decision for sure. Yeah, that bro, is five Bilal rounds. Is, uh, that fight. Yeah, it's five rounds. And just remember this shit. All I'm going to say is I heard all that about Sean Brady. I heard all this about Sean Brady. I heard all this. He's going to wrestle fuck Bilal. He's going to expose I was never him. Sean Brady freaking train. No, nah, bro, I had to hear how he was going to expose him and all this other bullshit. No, he didn't. No, he didn't, bro. Bilal's going to expose Gilbert Burns. Y'all going to see. Um, What else? So Dana announced a few fights. Um, What was? So there was the Bilal. He bumped that to the co-main five rounds, right? And then there was Charles versus Benil got moved. Is that right? And then... He announced Jack Hermanson versus Brendan Allen and Marvin Vittori versus Jared Cannonier. Um I don't I don't see I have a problem with the middleweight division where I feel like there's a bunch of guys who like I mean, I don't know. I guess I gotta admit how good Izzy is at this moment right here to make my point, to be honest. And I'm not a guy that's ever really been high on Izzy, but bro, like I just don't even see the point in the Cannoneer fight versus Vittori. Like, what's at stake? That one of these guys are going to go get beat by Izzy again? 
Like, I don't know, man. I really like the Duplessis fight. I'm really excited for it to happen more so. Bro, I hope it does too, man, because we're we're putting this shit to rest. Well, you know, how the hell he get a title shot, the Plessis? I mean, because I he, because he's the only guy. Is he hasn't beat, bro? I guess that's the so. only reason I'm excited. Except he's not gonna get that chance because he can get fucking murdered by Rob, bro. All right, <laughs> Rob is whooping that ass. Yeah, I mean, and Rob I can't... is saying, "Welcome to the fucking UFC, bro." Rob is gonna get a, a what do you call it, uh, an anonymous fucking donation on Twitch. For like fucking a million Man, dollars. Bobby Knuckles is gonna do whatever it wants to that boy. That's and right. The is gonna knock him oh. out, bro. Script shit, it's all written, bro. They're gonna give it to Plessy to win, bro. Hey, man, Bobby Knuckles is gonna do anything he wants for oh, that I, boy, man. Come that's on, that, oh, bro, I know, I know he could, but bro, the UFC is gonna be paying fucking Bobby Knuckles a fat sack, bro, to sit. So on the couch. here's all I want to say to everybody. Everybody, because I'm on Duplessis too, because fuck it, because I've been on the guy. And, you know, when you see, when you're like riding your team, right? And then you see they got to go play the Yankees. Do you quit? Do you be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Now, nah, now, nah, fuck my team, you know? So, you know, I've been on Duplessis for a while. I'm going to stay on Duplessis. Um, and I will say, um, Rob, Rob is a legit favorite in that fight. But, for everybody that's talking, been talking about how horrible Duplessis is this whole time, talking shit about him, talking about now, and Andrew just did it, so that's why I get to call him out. Oh, Rob's gonna murder this man. Like, okay, bro, they're sending Robert Whitaker to do it. Like, stop calling this man trash. Stop, stop saying this man is not good. Like, like to beat him, he made it all the way to Robert. Fucking no, Whitaker. what they're doing is they're strategically bro, this man trying to take him to the top like, 15 fuck. to get him up. Everybody's top. talking about like, oh, never mind. Duplessis is out of the UFCs now. Like, bro, he, uh, he, bro, you think because he beat Darren Till, like he's one of the best fighters in the fucking league? Come on, bro. Not at all, bro. But what I'm saying is, is like, it's he ain't he ain't been beat up yet, right? Right, and like I said, they are strategically putting him against fighters in the rankings the same way they did Alex to get him up to Izzy, because we both know yeah. there were a million matchups that they could have made that would have put Pajeda out. But they're like, no, what's the worst possible fight that we can give you, but still give you a title shot off of it somehow? Yeah, let's go with Sean Strickland. We're gonna go with that guy. And then what they're doing now is they gave him Darren Till, who's obviously been um, mentally unstable as hell i don't even know if he wants to fight and then he Derek fights Brunson. and then he yeah, fights 38 year old brunson who can't fucking fight longer guy. than around it's just it's strategic but the strategy's over bro it's there's no more so listen i can't really argue that because where's waldo right so like i can't really argue because <laughs> i can't I just can't. I mean, people I, I actually no... think Bilal's going to beat freaking Gilbert Burns. Can you believe this shit, Andrew? Bro, somebody actually believe. Can you imagine being a grown adult and thinking that Gilbert Burns is going to take Bilal Muhammad down? <laughs> I am. I am, I do because I'm biased, but that, that's about it. Bro, <laughs> there is just. You guys are not that being honest with yourself. Gotta, it, so here's me. what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. I am from an area. That is very Arab populated, largest oh, Arab biased. population in, in, in outside of the Middle East. Right. So I don't have no problems, but I do hear and I do know some some Arab folks who have said, man, the hate is real. And I'm like, what do you mean to hate, bro? And they're like, people hate Arabs. And I'm like, yeah, but that was only because, you know, around the 9-11 shit. And then people let it go. And they're like, nah, bro, I'm telling you, like, no matter what. They just won't like us. Bro, my Bilal Muhammad is a good speaker. He's got a good whoa, personality. Whoa, 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 whoa. He you wins by racism or some shit. Why we don't like you You're saying this is built out of hate? hate? Bilal Muhammad. For what? No. He's, he's a good he's dude. Biased. He's boring. He he's fucking boring. He's fucking boring as shit. Because that and so people no, wait a minute. Decision. So if he wins the belt. And then it's boring for four deep. Wait, how many? How many defenses did the Magnum? If he def, if he's boring for three defenses, then he's That'd a goat, shot. though, right? Oh, then he's a, a goat, if he though, gets right? That, I'll start giving him more respect. I'm gonna back you on that one, like, Joe. I'm gonna back you on that one. The same way you think he's a fucking square, that's the same way I feel about Bilal. 
I'm from Chicago. I don't think the dude's fucking Chicago. I think the dude's a fucking square. I think he's fucking boring. So that's why I don't like him. I don't like him because I'm fucking, I'm racist. No, I just think he's fucking boring. How dare you? How dare you? Bro, I've never seen Dead Fixes this like hands. I love it. <laughs> Bro, he, he raised his voice hey, a little bit. Dead that wasn't Dead Pig, that was somebody else. <laughs> right? Dead Pig's in the car with his homie on break. His homie's yelling in the phone right now, hitting the blunt. Talking about, let me say Yo, but ba- ba- I'll back you on that one, Joe. I'll back right. you on that one. Remember when uh, Bilal was fighting somebody? And they kept shouting, uh, the, the boy from the States, and they were shouting, uh, USA, USA. And Bilal was like, what the fuck, man? Like, I'm, I'm from the States. You know? Wait, Remember that he one? He said they kept well, shouting, and then he cut out. What a shocker. No one knows that he's, not, uh, that he's from America. Yeah. Well, his name doesn't really come around too much here in the Americas. Yeah, so, yeah. Surprised the idiots in the stands didn't know. Um, I was actually impressed by the fact that he um, beat Sean Brady on the feet. Like... Why? Like, it's sort of <laughs> just because he's not known. Fan. He's not known for like finishing people with strikes. Maybe it was the fact that I was watching the fight at two a.m. I don't know. Oh no, no I, dude, go back. I'd say he's all about opposite. If he's if he is going to match up with you in the stand up, he's going to take you down. If he can't grapple with you, he's going to make you stand up. That's that's the style of Bilal Muhammad. Listen, bro, this dude is so good. The current champion cheated. To end the fight, average. Like, I don't know. What's up? <laughs> hey, go back and watch. And Karen um, Champion was, was pissing him up, bro. Man. What are you talking about? Yeah, he was pissing so, him up. So, I'm just trying to talk to me. Hang on. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Go back we and watch again. that. Uh, the fight with Sean Brady and Michael Chiesa. And when you watch Michael Chiesa, of all people, piecing him the fuck up, that's oh, that third round wrong, was awful. Dude. That was like, Ram was awful for Sean Brady. When I saw that, I was like, the minute this guy faces a dude who he cannot get down, he is fucking toast. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. And, and I Bilal, like, I and actually, we all know, dude, Bilal's not even a good striker. Like, he's decent. He's okay. But if Bilal can do that to him, that just shows you the deficiency he had. Uh, that fight pissed me off, too, because I, well, I was kind of on a Sean Brady little train there. Until I watched that fight, and that's what dropped me off of him. And I was like, "Now, no, he's not going to be anything special or anything like that." Now, I mean, to Joe's credit, shit. to Joe's credit, Bilal is a good dude. He's actually really funny on Twitter. I met him last year at UFCX. He's a good dude. He speaks well. I like him as a person. I, I, I won't deny that. I mm-hmm. just don't. I, I am not a fan of his fights. I don't no, enjoy really watching sh- his fights. That's yeah. it. I was gonna say the only shit talking I did after that fight is I made the joke is when is when did Khabib become a striking coach? <laughs> I see you're a striker now. Man, I just wanna say Gilbert don't really knock people out either. If he knocks people out, Bilal knocks people out. I'm just saying. Like this is gonna be a grappling match. All right, I think the world class jujitsu guy's got a little bit of an upper hand. Tell that to Khabib. <laughs> Hell, that's to Islam. Bro, you can't compare Bilal to They're these guys, them, bro. What are we doing? Here? For five minutes. Bro, Dude, guys that stay on top like and maul Rus- with wrestling, which is what Bilal will do to him, yeah. that fucking I mean, jiu-jitsu will mean nothing when he's in the bro. corner getting beat up. <laughs> Bilal really like- didn't exactly <laughs> keep Wonderboy down, did he? He just held him up against the cage. Good yeah. enough. Hey, Usman got a defense and called the GOAT for doing that shit. So, I don't – like, I don't know what the standard is here. Quit hating on my boy. <laughs> and I think he took – wait a minute, wait a minute. You said he didn't take Wonder Boy down? Is that what you said? I didn't say that. I didn't say he didn't hold him down. So, in fifth – okay. I mean, he held him against the cage though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He held oh, him wow. against the cage. What, what, what a surprise. He's security guard. Minutes, he had 12 minutes of time of control time. That sounds Most like that was another a... great champion that I've heard of once upon a sounds time. Sounds like an incredibly <laughs> exciting fighter that I would absolutely love to watch. Man, you want me to name off some stats for some other really exciting <laughs> 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 I was right, like, man, right. we could do this all fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so 
Josh Emmett got- versus Ilya Taporia. Fucking Josh Emmett's going to die, bro. Fuck, I, know, I like sad. him. I, met I like him, him too. He's a good guy. He had a good run in his late age and shit, bro. <laughs> like, he's going to die. Ilya Ily- Taporia is a scary motherfucker. Bro, it, like, if you're telling me I could get two Josh drunk Josh Emmett's mad at me or one drunk Ilya Taporia mad at me, I'm taking the two Josh Emmett's. I'm just being honest. Like, fuck. Ilya is a scary motherfucker. Wait, hold on, hold on. We're at, we're actually talking about about baby's boy. So baby, how do you feel about this fight, man? Man, I'm with I'm with Joe. Whatever he say, I'd rather take <laughs> two drunk Josh Emmett than deal with fucking Ilya Deporier. Man, you know Ilya Deporier, that guy. He not that guy. He him. He him, bro. I bet bro. anybody in this chat room bet your whole bankroll, bet your whole life savings on this fight. Bro, he is going to stretch his ass out if he don't knock his Joe, ass Joe, that's, that's, that's 10000 right there. That's a $10,000 bet right there. I believe you, bro. I believe you will have a slip we're, like We're that waiting for the pitcher. We're waiting for the pitcher. He posts him, and then he finger writes baby on him, so you know, fuck you, it's his. It's nice. I've seen it. I don't know where he gets the marker thing. Probably from his phone. It's pretty nice, though. I've seen it. Yeah, it's a feature on the phone, on the iPhone. <laughs> man, so um, niggas be capping. You know, niggas probably gonna be niggas probably be stealing. I don't know. Oh hell yeah, I know. <laughs> I ain't, yeah, bro, listen. There is no way if you didn't write on your screenshots that them shits would somebody would show their homie and he would screenshot it and send it to a group like it was his, and then five dudes in that group be posting that shit in other groups. Before you know it, you be liking your own slip. On Twitter, <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's a good ass bet. I got the same thing. <laughs> like, yeah, that don't don't let motherfuckers fool you. Uh uh-uh. uh. But uh, all right. So dead serious. I'm not gonna fuck with you. Is anybody? Wait, wait, hold on, Joe. Hold on, Joe. Hey, how, what do you think the line gonna be in early the point? Is it just minus six hundred or eight? Minus five. You want to know the line? <laughs> on it? I'm I'm probably, dude, he's going to be like three to one to open. I would say two fifty or yeah, around there. Whatever it is, just uh, slam it. As soon as you get it, just slam that motherfucker. <laughs> Put in the parlay. You know, just do what you got to do. Yeah, I don't think the book. I don't think the bookies are fucking with this one. They're going to be like, nope, minus three hundred. That's it. You're not making money off of us. Oh, bro, you're That's not getting it that good. That shit's going to be gift. minus three fifty or where? Oh, right here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Um. Minus two sixty, Ilya plus two twenty, Emmett. Oh, you gotta take that shit. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta take that shit. Right now. That shit's gonna jump up to like six hundred. You know it, it will. Man, I ain't so got listen, that shit. I ain't got that's at lowvig.ag. So if you're really looking for, so it's moved some places already and opened different. So here, let me go back down to it because I had it up. Um, So there is, it is as rough as minus 315 plus 235 for Josh. Uh, It sits that way at four books that I can see. Pretty soon we'll have 36 books. Right now we've got 11. Um, Ilya at another book is minus 295 and m is plus 220 so by the time by the time that shit hits major books and you're seeing it everywhere i would expect fucking taporia to be minus 400 same 350 oh, if i if i get it around that man i ain't i ain't fucking with it you know yeah, you could probably take that shit by submission bro oh, fucking, uh, man Anderson i don't like money. it i don't like getting cute with bets if i got a if I, I know do it. Grand, but you could probably put a couple hundred on a fucking submission, bro. There's a good chance, man. Hell that dude yeah, is right. sickening, bro. He is fucking sickening. There is just no way around it. Um, what else was there on that one? Uh, Jack Hermanson versus Brendan Allen. I'm, I like Brendan Allen. I like the dude, so fuck it. I'm on Brendan Allen. I'm not saying I'll bet him, but I'll probably bet him. I like the dude. Um... Sean Strickland versus Abbas Magomedov. 
I, I don't even know who Abbas Magomedov is. I'm sure if I seen his ass, I'd be like, oh, this dude. But I don't even know who the fuck he is. I recognize the name, but I can't picture him in my head for fucking nothing right now. I don't know. Um, I think that's all the fights that he said on that card. No, wait. Is it? Mm, trying to go through this fucking announcement and look at it. Um, Ilya Taporia. Yeah, I think that's all Dana let out. And then uh, I had... How about Sean Brady versus Jack De La Madalena? Yeah. That's on versus... July 8th, actually. That's the fight night thing, no? Yeah, so... That's the 290, and, uh, bro, am I wrong for just automatically being on Jack Mella? Uh, Who's he fighting again? He's fighting a grappler, right? Sean Brady. Mm -hmm. Sean Brady. Yeah, so that's the thing, man, is what I've noticed. I remember um, when Jack Della fought Ameev, and I remember taping Ameev, and I'm like, okay. He clearly has the grappling advantage, but the problem is Amiv has no top control. He couldn't. He can't stay on top of people. He lets people get up. That's what happened. He took Madalena down. Madalena got back up, and then he knocked him the fuck out. Here's the thing, man. If Sean Brady gets him down, I don't think he's getting back up. Question is, can he get him down? Because Jack's boxing is slick. He knows how to use his reach because he's long as hell, and Sean's not very big for that division in terms of you know height and reach. So yeah, man. I'm, if he somehow gets him to the ground, man, don't be surprised if he loses, bro. I'm not even joking. I just don't know if he can get him there. So here's what I'll say, um, man. If, if so, like, I'm not, I'm not revisiting. I'm not rehammering what we just talked about. I am not rehammering what we just talked about. Um, but if you don't think Bilal is a good striker, what do you think? Jack's going to do to him, bro. Like, even in a short period exchange, like, man, I just, fuck. I think, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty high on Jack on this one. I don't know. I'm not, maybe I'm biased because the last fight, because I, I think high on Jack, but, bro, I feel like, fuck, that's a, that's a hefty bet. JDM all day. I mean, fuck, maybe I'm not seeing it right, but. JDM. Yeah, what's the odds in that one, Joe? Um, let me see if I like I try to look at my book. I didn't see anything. So that would be July 9th, right? Yep. So I would I would hammer Jack Madalena big time, man. So I don't have odds on that yet. They haven't posted haven't from posted any sports book. Sport, but... Okay. So um, all right, we got about 15 minutes left before we hit the two and a half hour marker, and I really want to cut it off there. So I want to stop everything for a minute. Um, soon, our website will have odds for every MMA fight that has odds from every book across four regions. We will cover the United States. We will cover the UK. We will cover the European Union, and we will cover Australia. Um, as more markets open up, I'm sure that we will open those up. Every book in those regions that covers MMA, we will have the money lines on. We'll work on getting props, over-unders, and all that shit later. Um, you know, everything is coding. Everything takes time. Everything takes money. Um, it just is what it is. But um, we will have odds for everything localized. We will not... Dead pick said something about not wanting to plug sites that aren't paying us. Um, we won't have to do that soon. Um, soon enough, we will have our own tail of the tapes. We will have, we will have it all for our own site. So just something to look forward to. Some of it's in progress. If you guys want to see the very, very, very early on beta of it, um, you can go over to capmma.com. Um, there's a shit ton of odds there. It's just a few random bookmakers right now because we were getting it working. Um, pretty soon you will be able to click the region and then slide over. The bookmakers will be listed for every card. It'll be, it'll be beautified quite a bit. Um, you'll also be able to click the odds over between American and desk. You don't have to, if you're 
around the world and you're fucking looking at the ads and you're on the website when we're on the website you will be able to see it how you read it and how you bet it because most people on twitter or at least most people in these spaces probably think that there's only one way that odds work but there is actually an american system and a decimal system so we will offer odds in both systems um pretty much like i said across the board so um i don't know something to look forward to something i'm working on uh soon enough we'll have a few other things um we will get all the links back for capping but we will not offer links to people who offer odds or people who offer tail of the tape for obvious reasons um we will have full tail of the tape strikes per minute takes downs per minute um we will have full tail of the tape we will have everything that ufcstats.com has so um yeah is what it is um i'm pretty excited about it i spend a lot of my time working on it i don't cover a lot of extra shit in these spaces right now i uh just tried to write up the cards um but yeah i'm pretty excited about it um i know on topic mma.com rings home with everybody but it's not easy to get hits or to post so we'll there will be an on topic mma.com but it will forward to a page at the capmma.com cap mma will be the primary project for now um for the guys that are close in the group i plan to post a group project if anybody wants to basically own a percentage i'm going to do it like i'm not at all being a dick or smug or anything um i'm going to do it with or without you but um every sports book has um affiliate programs so eventually you get to the point where every odds has a link when you click the link it takes you to the sports book you get paid for the click we'll never lie about it we won't have to add a bunch run a bunch of ads but we will eventually monetize for ourselves so um i'll have something posted for that probably within the next few days for the guys that have been around for a while anybody who's interested that's just listening i'd probably run it by any regulars that are interested first um but we'll need a few people if we're going to try to make a little run out of it. Um, but like I said, either way, I'm doing it. Um, so that's all I got there. Uh, anybody got anything they want to talk about before we cut it out? Uh, you want to record your uh, sound bite? Man, no, nah, but I should be ready. I should have had something wrote and shit, huh? Because I've been thinking about it, baby. You might think I'm lying to you, bro. But I do think about that shit. I'm like, bro, we got to get this on there and we got to get this on there. So what I need to do is try to write down a couple things that a few people in this space could say and get everybody here and at the end so you could do the sound bite. That's what I need to do. Baby, um, how, where the fuck do I could buy a beat, bro? Like, I don't need a beat to make a rap song. Like, you know how you can get like a six, like a maybe not six seconds, but you can get a short instrumental sample instead of paying that dumbass music at the beginning i could just have a player hooked up there's ways to play through the phone while the space is open bro how do i where do i get that I shit? Mean, can you get some mean, shits i mean regardless if you try to record it like recording somebody's beat and try to like no you know, no no you like you can get rights to sample like oh, you could yeah, get yeah, yeah they got uh 30 dollar rights to where like you can use it for like you know, quick clips. You know, you got you just got to pay. It. I think they usually uh, ranges uh, thirty to fifty bucks, where you can lease it. For yeah, because like that's what I'm talking about. Just like at the beginning, like we <clears throat> just have a little thing and we could lease that shit. Yeah, you yeah, know where you. to do that shit. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I'll shoot you a uh, a website you can check out and go from there. Yeah, bro, because I was trying to find. I found a couple of them, but you know whose music you can't find on them sites. I, I found like three. You can't find no too short beats, bro. Where do I get too short beats? Oh, you talking about like established beats, like, like yeah, bro. Where do oh. I get that shit? People sample that shit on dumb shit all the time. It can't be no thousand dollars, bro. I hear people sampling shit everywhere. There's no way they're paying big dollars for that shit hey, for a beat. Off the top of my head, you could probably get it on iTunes. Like, just buy the dollar, buy it for a dollar. And go from there. And, like, and just like, clip it and stay within yeah. the fucking copyright rules of the clip. Yeah. But like, it's like uh, six seconds or eight seconds, right? You can use anything you want for like six seconds or eight seconds. Six seconds, that was Vines, right? There is some type of rule. I'm going to have to look that shit up. I think it's 15 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. But Oh, bro, that's forever in a day. 
Right, right, you're right. Man, I, I honestly, it's, it's just easier just to get a beat that's not established, but I, I feel it. I feel it. I, I listen, bro. You know the song Getting It by Too Short? Hell yeah. Who don't? I want the, I want the opening of that shit, bro. I know, I know regulators. <laughs> oh, <that's okay. laughs> Regulators! Ah, that was fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> shit. Anyways, I'm a captain, man. That's a that's a beautiful space. We clock out just under two and a half hours. Uh, I'll get it up on the YouTube. Maybe one day we'll hit the point where we can uh, uh, monetize on YouTube. You got to get like a thousand followers or some shit. I just upload them and let it grow organically. If we yeah, get monetized. Yeah, you gotta get like a thousand or fifteen hundred subscribers. Yeah, if I could get it monetized though. Nah, like you gotta videos. oh, and you gotta hit a certain amount, of, a certain amount of watch hours too. Yeah, I was reading all that shit. Actually, I seen all of that. But if it could ever fucking get there, um, man, for like it's the way I seen the analytics shit is like it shows you what it pays per video and shit, right? So like. We got a tape crew, bro. I just fucking, these videos and this shit get broke up amongst the hosts and the tape crew and make it worth everybody's time. Like, man, when you talk about monetizing, I'm not no greedy guy. I'm not trying to have dudes in here doing tape week after week so that one fucking day I can be like, yo, I'm getting paid on YouTube. Fuck you guys. Like, that's not, I just figure if we can upload them and get them there, eventually I want to do some video content. And obviously my video content makes some money. I'm going to want to keep it, but I'll, figure out how to post all the analytics public and shit if it ever gets there bro like i ain't bro i don't know i just i'm not greedy like that so whatever we can, make, we can make like whatever that's like that website bro i'm telling you i'm gonna post a little thing for all the regulars and the dudes in the space and uh man i don't care if anybody gets in on it or not but i know what some of these other odd sites are worth and the traffic they're getting i started looking into it because there's ways to find all that shit Man, there's a reason that every single book on earth has an affiliate program. If it's an online book, you can get an affiliate link. If that link gets clicked, you get paid. There's a reason that they have those because there are sites killing it. Um, yeah, there's there's APIs and those are expensive. Those are data inputs. But uh, yeah, there's ways around that shit, too. Anyways, I've already typed something up, but I got to proofread it because I can't post shit that's long unless I proofread it because Andrew's a fucking grammar Nazi over there. You forget two commas and misspell a word. Andrew's like, I think you meant to say this, but I understand what you're saying. I get it. But he will let you know that you fucking mistyped she on your 8,000 word fucking essay just in case you miss it. No, I'm just giving him a hard time, man. Hey, English uh, is always one of my strongest subjects, I'll post man. it up in some groups. Anyways, boys, uh, that's it. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. Everybody that listens that's been here all night, that shit is huge, man. Um, even people that just come in and out and people that get in on the YouTube, like, I'll say honestly,